assistant coach, and Rouse, who went to San Jose. They picked up Louis Krupp. He's only played five of the nine games they've played so far, though. He has a hamstring problem right now, will not play tonight. Brett Hall was the big signing for Dallas. He struggled to score goals so far this season, only one goal in the first eight games. But he has pretty good numbers against the team he's going to face tonight. 55 goals in about 62 career games against Detroit. So perhaps that, that's what they had in mind when they signed him this summer. And up front, certainly something we'll be keeping an eye on tonight. Down the middle of the ice, the center iceman for both clubs. That's where the story is. Well, perhaps the best center ice crew in the league is Detroit, and the Stars aren't far behind in that category. When you look one through four, they go Iserman, Fedorov, Larionov, and then they throw out Draper as their fourth line guy. Madonna, Neuendijk, Carbonell, Scrudeman will be the guys in the middle tonight. Well, one of those pieces for Dallas wasn't there during that series against Detroit last year, and that was Joe Neuendijk, and they missed him dearly. Back in again last night, uh, he, he did all the scoring for Dallas in the first period, a couple of goals, including a power play goal. Where they missed Joe Neuendijk in the playoffs last year when he went out with a knee injury was on face-offs, was leadership in the locker room, and that timely goal scoring. And uh, he's showing that once again. Got his 400th career goal last night. One of the subplots of the Western Conference Finals last year clearly was in goal. Tonight, we will revisit that matchup as we go to the Dallas Morning News starting goaltenders. Well, Chris Osgood and Ed Belfour uh, battle tooth and nail every night. Belfour hurt himself in warm-up. We're going to try to keep an eye on that. It looked like a back problem. Good record so far this year. Did not play last night, so he's fresh to go at Detroit here this evening. The other end, Chris Osgood's had a brilliant start to the regular season. A record of six and two. The goals against average, one of the best in the league at 1.38. And I think he was the difference in that series last spring. Will it be trick or treat tonight for the Dallas Stars? The fans are ready at Reunion Arena. By Nations Bank. Discover the rewards of Nations Bank Advantage Checking. and to document hard copy down on the ice for a future program. Razor the edge. Well, if you've been following the show so far this season, this is going to be an oddity because the Stars aren't going to get the edge in special teams. It's a push tonight. Brilliant penalty killing for Detroit. A great power play for Dallas and uh, vice versa on both sides of that thing. Team speed, that's an advantage for Detroit and the Stars have to curtail it tonight. Even strength offense, the Red Wings have outscored Dallas 19 to 7 on the season when at even strength. That's an advantage for the Wings. Grit and grind, both sides have plenty of guys that play it that way. That also a push. The Razor's Edge has been brought to you by the Room Store, where they put it all together and save you more. The officials for tonight's game, Don Van Massenhoven is your referee. Andy McKelman and Mark Perry will call the line. Mike Madano and Steve Eiserman at center ice. And we're for real, and we are underway. Matt Bichuk playing it ahead. Hall from center to Madano. He'll whip it in. Osgood out to try and cut it off. It winds around to the near wing side. Darian Hatcher lofting it toward the goal. Osgood reaching out with his catcher and hangs onto it. Missing from the lineup tonight. First for the Detroit Red Wings. Stacy Roos, Jan Golubovsky, and Kevin Hudson all scratches. It means Normerica will be backing up tonight in goal. Brent Gilchrist and Yui Krupp out with injuries. Sergei Gusev, Tony Herkus, and Brent Severin all scratched tonight. No injuries to report for Dallas. Face off in the Detroit zone. Madonna and Iserman joust, letting it in to help. The puck drips to the right wing corner and the red wing end of the ice. 
Lettinen kicking at it. Lindstrom pushing him from behind. Hall picking it up along the far side. Puts it into the high slot, but right on Brendan Shanahan's stick. He'll come to center and hammer it right on. Ed Belfort from long range, able to see it and knock it down. Lettinen up in a hurry. He'll bounce it to the Red Wing line, and both teams making early changes. Be interesting to see who plays against who as this game goes on. Both teams very deep as far as their offensive lines go in the first big hit of the game, Hatcher on Malfi. And Langenbrunner colliding at center ice with Joey Koser. Hatcher in to pick it up. He's chased by Draper, goes down in the corner to the right of Belfour's goal. The wings are in on the attack. Malfi circling with the puck along the near boards. He'll drop it into the left wing corner. Hatcher will slam it up the far side. Langenbrunner taking a hit from Koser but protects the puck. Neuendijk over skates. The wings on a turnover. They score! Belfour appeared to have a problem with it. The pass came in between the circles and a quick snapshot. Off the stick of Kurt Mulphy. He's bagged his second goal of the season. And the Wings are up early one to nothing. Well, I remember last spring when these two teams were meeting every second night. We talked a lot about first goals. And the first one this time is going to go to Detroit. They lost possession, turnover along the boards, and nobody picked up Malpe. It wasn't so much the turnover as it was some loosey-goosey play away from the puck. Quick snapshot from the top of the circle that I think caught the inside of the right pad of Belfour and went between the legs. I mentioned the first goal thing because Detroit has scored first in seven of their first nine games, make that now eight of ten. They're six and one in those games. The Stars, when they give up the first goal, are undefeated, 3-0. and oh. So it's a good omen for both clubs. Perhaps. We'll see what happens. Here's a turnover. Verbeek with a steal. The Carbonell pad save. Verbeek on the rebound. He shot it wide. Delayed call coming up against the Red Wings. Good, aggressive, forechecking work done by the Dallas Stars line. Of Guy Carbonell, Pat Verbeek, and Dave Reed. It results in the game's first power play. Now, Pat Verbeek has just shown some consistent excellence early in this season and and he's been playing all over the map he's played a little bit on the fourth line on the second line right wing left wing another turnover he gets it in deep Carbonell tried to bring it towards the net with the backhander and a pretty good save by Osgood with the left pad and then the rebound was just dribbled wide the penalty is on big Aaron Ward their defenseman for hooking on that play in front of the net so now it comes down to special teams. This is a great matchup, Ralph, between these two teams. You have the number two power play in the league against the number two penalty killing unit in the league. Dallas 27.5% on the young season. Detroit 93.2 on the penalty kill. Face off to Osgood's right. Madonna, Hall, Lettman, Sador, and Zuba. For Dallas on the power play, Daryl Sador. Wrist shot from the left point. It hit a stick and went wide of the goal. Madonna got there ahead of Murphy along the far side. Drops it along the boards to Lettman, now to Madonna. Right side, Zuboff teeing up. He fires. It's blocked by McCarty. Madonna recovering to Sador. Slap shot. Lettman tried to deflect it. It went wide of the goal. Zuboff along the near boards in the Detroit zone to Lettman. To Madonna to Hall. Couldn't get the wood on it in front of the goal, and the wing's clear. Now again, that happened early in the game here last night where Madonna sprung Hall in front of the net, and he couldn't pull the trigger. Wings. Send it all the way down again. And the Stars are forced to regroup. Just underway from Reunion Arena, the Detroit Red Wings and the Dallas Stars, each with 12 points on the young season to lead all comers in the Western Conference. The Wings are off to a 1-0 early lead. And a goal by Kirk Mulphy. Stars trying to even things up here on their initial power play opportunity of the game. And here's Joe Neuendijk, who had two goals last night, including career number 400. And the Stars 3-3 tie to the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Look bouncing along the far boards in the Red Wing zone, and it hops the glass and winds up in the seats. Well, Brett Hall with the uh, best chance on that power play, and he and his first unit would jump back on the ice, just cruise to the front of the net, then got the pass from behind the net. It jammed him, though. The, the pass was in towards the heel of his stick. He tried to one-time it. It was, it was actually a flipping, flopping pass from behind the net and he couldn't get any kind of lumber on it whatsoever. Brett Hall uses a stick that's like a, a graphite uh, golf club with all that whip in it, so he doesn't take a lot of slap shots because he has no control where it's going. So you see a lot of snap shots and a lot of wrist shots and a lot of torque out of them. Puck drifts to center. Hatcher has it there, sliding it across the chambers. Now up ahead to Madonna. Right wing pass. Hall had to reach for it. Play is onside. Hatcher battling along the near boards. Members of both teams crash for the puck, and now a hand pass call. 
I believe it's against the Dallas Stars in the Detroit zone. And Chris Draper just racked up Brett Hall along the board. The Red Wings use an awful lot of people when they kill penalties. They're, they bring a lot of people and it, bring, it keeps the energy level up. And then they just dare you as a, as a power play unit to outwork them as penalty killers. That's why they're number two. The Stars are number two on their power play for the most part because they have all kinds of skill and all kinds of confidence in what they're doing. And that's why this is such a great matchup. You have some, some intelligent, hard-working penalty killers and an extremely cerebral power play against them. Last year, it was penalty killing in the regular season between the two teams that had the advantage. Dallas was 2 for 22 in the five-game series, 9.1. Detroit was worse, 1 for 21, 4.8%. Stars bring it ahead, Sador, ripping it in. Off the boards, Neuendijk, taking it around behind the goal to the far side. Tried to send it back out to Zuboff. Shanahan picks his pocket, starts Eisenman it away at center. Attacking at the Dallas line, he's muscled up, but a shot from Shanahan went off. Fell for his shoulder. Stars will pick it up. Penalty is over. The Wings are back at full strength. But the Stars attack for beat, just offside. Early in the first period, the Detroit Red Wings lead the Dallas Stars 1-0 on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. Toyota, on the power of executive privilege. It's a great opportunity for us, hon. It's way more money. Way longer hours. One nothing Detroit early, and the Warrior captain of the Red Wings just got rung up as he stepped over the blue line. He saw the hit coming from Sidor, and you, when you're a player like him, a great player in this game, you take a hit to make a play. He did. Got it over to Shanahan on the right wing side. Good save by Belfort. Could have been 2 nothing. Long shot from Kozlov. Blockered away by Belfort. Chambers will pick it up. Lariana point and Kozlov up front. The Strudlin trio for Dallas. Tonight, Dan Kesmer in the lineup for the Stars, and he'll play wing. Mike Keane, Ryan Strudlin on the near boards in the Detroit zone. Kesmer working away at it. It's back up to the right point. Chambers, a shot! Osgood got the pad on it, then whacked it behind his goal. Right corner, Keane. Overskating the puck. Kozlov lifting it out, going after him. Kesmer with an elbow. And the Stars are going to be penalized for that play. The Red Wings going on the power play. This reminds me, this is, this is eerie. I know it's Halloween, but this is so similar to every game of that series, especially in Detroit last year, where they give up a goal early and get behind, and Kesmer taking a penalty because of all the, the energy that he has stored up. This is his first game of the season. He comes in with an elbow right in the chops of Kozlov down in the corner. And, yeah, Kesmer was kidding this morning. He says, I don't, fool, I don't fool around with the meaningless games. I just play the big ones. <laughs> Remember, he sat for upward almost two months, or over a month anyway, and then all of a sudden he just gets thrown in the middle of the Western Conference Championship, and he played great. And Kesmer is in the penalty box. He has not played yet this season, but 173 career National Hockey League games. And Hitchcock now looks across the ice and sees him in the penalty box and puts the Red Wings to work on the power play. This year they are fifth at 20.8% against the Dallas penalty killing unit. Currently fourth in the NHL at 89.7%. It was excellent last night against Anaheim. Those two slick characters, Korea and Solani, that did him in late, but not on their power play. Wings are in on the attack. Stars find the puck. Madonna will skate it out to Lettinen at center. Here they come shorthanded two on two. Lettinen a shot kicked out by Osgood. And Holmstrom will turn it back the other way. He and Brown lead the Wings with two power play goals apiece in the young season. They have eight different guys who scored on their power play this year. Balance indeed for Detroit. But now a pass. Caught Fedorov looking the other way. Cleared all the way back. Murphy. Take a pass at center. Carbono there to create havoc at neutral ice. And hustling it down Sador. Short-handed. He's in. Right wing circle. Taking it around behind the goal. Trying to wrap around. He's chopped at. It's loose. Sador persists and gets a good backhand drive on. Osgood held it long enough for the whistle. And Carbono now pushing with Shanahan in front of the Red Wing goal. Well, that's that's what the stars want if you have speed use it but also get in the face of these red wings and kind of drag them into this thing and sador with some excellent penalty killing anytime you have the puck it's good penalty killing wrapped it around from behind the net on his backhand osgood went down on the far side and blocked that one then spit it right back out to sador who quickly ripped it back on goal on a backhand from the far circle so excellent penalty killing by 
Daryl Sador, who's been used as a forward more than once in this early season, and that's where he is right now. He and Carboneau are both playing forward, the two forwards on this penalty kill. Zuboff and Ludwig, the defenseman, a face-off in the Detroit zone, controlled by the wings. Lidstrom to Igor Larionov. Dropping it back to his defenseman. He'll carry it up to the Dallas line. Cross to his right. Watched by Sador. He'll whip it around behind the goal. LaPointe in the left wing corner. Hit by Zuboff. Ludwig in to knock McCarty on his butt. And the Stars get to the puck. Sador will clear. 40 seconds remaining in the Kesmer minor. Wings lead it 1 0. 14 10 to play in the first period. Here's Lariana. Cutting to his right to the Dallas line. Into the slot. Dishing it out to LaPointe. His shot blocked by Zuboff. And he's able to chop it up and out. Osgood will come and get it. Scrutland is watching him. He'll tap it up the boards. 15 seconds remain in the Red Wing power play. They'll try it one more time. Lidstrom to Larianoff. Back to Lidstrom. He's in. Drops it at the left point for Larianoff. Into the middle for LaPointe. He gave it away. And Matt Pachuk will clear. Both teams are really very conscious in this early going of taking people towards the net. Now a turnover in the Detroit zone. Stars try and work it out front. Letting and held. The penalty is over. Each team now 0 for 1 with the man advantage. Wings bring it ahead. Larry Onoff dumps it in. Belfort cuts it off. Gives it to Hatcher. Right wing pass to Letton and to Madonna. Picking up speed as he moves to the Detroit line. He's in, but Hall took a step across the line. Proceeding the puck, thus offside. Well, this matchup between these two teams, so this early in the season, is a treat for fans and for us to call. And yes, they're fairly evenly matched up when you when you look at what they've done so far. The records heading in, Detroit six three and all. The Stars with only the one loss. The big difference, I guess, would be the the goals for per game, and that's where the Stars have struggled a little bit. Three point two for Detroit, well under three for Dallas. But when you look at special teams, you look at the goals against on both sides. It's almost identical, well under, or under two anyway, but everyone's under two nowadays. And then the special team matchups are great, too. And we've been talking about this for a couple of years. I've had a smile on my face since the puck dropped here. It's just a lot of fun, and you can feel it in the building. This game is special. Red Wings won't be here for another five months. Not back until April. The next one between these two teams is Friday the 13th. Up at Joe Lewis Arena. Boy, can you imagine it was Friday the 13th and it was Halloween? The wow. double whammy? Wow. Tell you what, we got enough to worry about tonight. Stars grapple for it along the near wing boards at center. And Draper, and they kick it back. Langenbrunner scrapped to get it across. But Macau beat it ahead to Draper. To his left, the Malti. He's got the game's only goal, and he pulled away from Chambers, lobbed it in. Wings are changing. Grant Marshall will bring it ahead. Lost the puck at the line. Turnover. Federoff. Marshall fought to try and get it back, but Kozlov got there with the shot. Penalty coming up, and it is against the Dallas Stars. And Craig Ludwig for interference in front of the Stars' goal. 12-23 remaining in the first period. The defending champs lead it one to nothing, and they'll be on the power play when we continue on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. Unlike other airlines. Tickets. So if we've got a seat, it's yours. Quite a crowd tonight. Morale Hallows Eve at Reunion Arena. The wings going on the power play racer for the second time in the hockey game. Well, you turn the puck over in your own zone, and a lot of times it ends up in your net, and sometimes it forces people to take penalties, and that's what happened. Marshall turned the puck over to Fedorov, and Ludwig had to take a penalty. Wings are in on side. Shot from Fedorov is blocked. Matt Pachuk knocked it down. Iserman, top of the left circle, delays. Sador went down, now gets back up. Scraps with Fedorov, finds the puck, but can't clear. Shanahan behind the Red Wing goal. He is taken out hard by Matt Pachuk. Murphy sliding it across to Iserman at the left point. To Murphy in the high slot. Tried to turn and fire it. Now it goes to the far side to Federoff. Now Lars! Shanahan set up on a bang-bang play and the puck blocked. Sidor will clear it. A lot of similarities between Shanahan and, and Brett Hall, especially on the power play. Both play their off wing. Their right shot's on the left side. Now Murphy is in from Holmstrom. They score! Tic-tac-toe play. Dallas falls 2-0 down to the wings. We're not midway through the first period. Same guys are killing them. Early. 
Iserman, who I thought was the best player in that series last year on both sides of the puck, ends up finishing this thing off. And they bring it over the blue line, and then as everyone got fixated on the guy in the middle with the puck, Iserman just sneaks down around the outside. And then Murphy with that tremendous vision, little, little look, and he knows Iserman's breaking towards the net, and bam. Off to the far side. Almost identical to how the Mighty Ducks tied the game up last night, changing the point of attack quickly right in front of the net, and, and Iserman has him up by a couple. Steve Iserman's third goal of the season. Murphy got the primary assist. The wings are back in again, and LaPointe shovels it wide of the goal. Mike Keane. Throw a hit along the far side on Ward, but Kozlov picks up the puck. He'll circle around behind the goal. They center it. Zuboff clears to the near boards for Beek, attempting to get it out. He does. And Scrutlin will dump it in deep. Not the start Ken Hitchcock wanted. Igor Larionov. The head to Vyacheslav Kozlov. Right wing pass at center. Marty LaPointe steered it in. Belfour out to get it. Turnover. Larionov jam by Scrutland and it was a good thing because Belfour was well out of position from the right point of drive and it's gunned wide that one came off Aaron Ward's stick and the Stars move it ahead Keen from center a long shot kicked out by Osgood Ward handing it off Shanahan tossing it Iserman will whip it in finds around to the right wing side in the Dallas zone Stars give it right to the point man Murphy he'll whip it around behind the goal Letnan on the near boards. Dousting with Iserman. Shanahan lost. Madonna cleared. Wing shot it right back in. And a delayed offside called now. And McCarty and Matt Pichuk with something to say to each other. Off to the left to the Dallas goal. A tap on the shin pads. And it doesn't take a blind to get back in the swing of things, does it? No. Nope. Get down in the corner. Ken Hitchcock, as you mentioned, probably seething and behind the bench with the start. They're chasing. And the one thing that he didn't want his team to have to do and you know you end up chasing if you take penalties and they've done that early and it cost them on the last one but uh, now they're back on their heels and as he said this morning to me what once you get back on your heels it's real difficult to get back on your toes again and he saw that last night in the game against Anaheim they really want to drag Detroit into the mud here tonight and and take them out of that that foot speed skill flow game and and play just a three yards and I guess facing the glass is what you call it. it's not three yards in a pile of dust in this game but, but don't allow them to use their superior foot speed and hustle in the game they just need to settle down a little bit here and stop turning the puck over because right now they're in a game razor that quite frankly is benefiting the Detroit Red Wings on the near boards in the Dallas zone Hatcher wrestled it away from Maltby Koser hit by Neuendijk are spicy in their own zone, but the Wings press the puck. Matt Pachuk took a hit, got it around behind his goal to the Dallas captain, Darian Hatcher. Grant Marshall got it out. The right to Draper, he'll lob it back in. 9.35 left in the first period. 2-0 Detroit. Stars chip it across the line. McCown got there ahead of Marshall. Using the boards, he advances the puck to center. Ludwig floats it right back in. Stars are changing. Wings would like to as well. Brown at center gave it away. Lettman throwing it in right wing side. He'll chase McCown to the near corner. Go to the far side. Fedorov got it around Madano and the wings clear it down the ice. Icing coming up here against Detroit. Remember the last regular season meeting before all the playoff stuff? Well, it was, a, it was a very good series between these two teams, but the last time they met in the regular season, the Stars won it, and they were, they were really pushing towards winning the President's Trophy, the best record in the regular season. They were outshot 45 to 16 in the game and won it 3 to 1, and Balfour was, was outstanding in goal for them. But since then, they've fallen into this habit against this team of, of dropping down one and two goals and then trying to get back into it again, and they've done it again tonight. Very difficult way to play. Here's Sador moving in. Can't get the shot away. He's hooked, hooked at by Brown. Play went uncalled. The fans wanted a penalty on the play. They didn't get it. The wings clear it ahead. Zuboff stepping up to make the play to a turning Mike Madonna. Right wing pass to Letton, and he's in. Stopping. Ran into traffic. The wings clear it. Here's Fedorov. He's got a step on Zuboff. 
Now Zuboff recovering inside the Dallas line. He threw it across. It's picked up by Lettman. Here come the Stars. Madonna right wing to Zuboff. The puck floated along the near boards. They couldn't attack cleanly. They'll have to regroup at center. Sador will gun it in, and Dallas will change. Go, go. Larry Murphy up the boards and out. Sean Chambers up the middle. Reed to Verbeek. He's in, right wing side. Ops not to shoot. Murphy came to take the puck away from him. It goes to the far side. Ludwig behind the goal to Reed. Wrapping around, and Osgood down low, covers the line, and keeps it. 2-0 Detroit on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. What we got is... Free checking at Bank United. Beyond the year 2000. And we want to. This promotion called 214 Go Stars. The Stars the Phoenix Coyotes, November 11th. Wings win the draw in their own zone. Erickson went down, but now he's back up. Verbeek tossed him down. <laughs> Verbeek was not going to be denied his ice off that faceoff. Now Hatcher at his own line. Lifting it, but right to Shanahan. He'll swat it in. Stars will go get it. Rich Matvichuk. Chased out from behind his goal. Eiserman watching him, but Matvichuk protecting the puck well. Advancing to Reed at center. He'll wrist it just wide of the goal. And Erickson will pick it up. Off to Osgood's left. Send it forward to Eiserman. He's got a goal in the game. He'll toss it in. Left wing corner in the Dallas zone. And the wings get a change. So do the Stars. Ryan Strudlin overskated. Holmstrom tossing it across the line. Matvichuk quickly whipping it back up. The first of four meetings between these teams this season. They are no longer division rivals. Detroit's still in the central, but the Stars have moved to the Pacific. And here's Detroit on the move. Holmstrom shot from the line, knocked down by Belfour. That's their 7-6 in favor of Detroit, but two of theirs have gone in. They lead this game 2-0. There's 6.40 to play in the first period. Dallas has yet to sort of get its game on the ice here, Razor. Well, what you have to do when you, when, certainly when you fall behind, whether it's Detroit or another team, is get pucks to the net like that. A shot from Ludwig turned aside by Osgood. Hall couldn't get to the rebound. Stars are always at their best against Detroit when they get pucks from the outskirts to the net. Now you have Strudlin and Malpe right in front of the Detroit bench. And the whistle stops play with 6.20 remaining in the first period. Well, where the Stars have, have struggled a little bit here in the early going is, is getting pucks into areas where they can get it to the net and try to get second opportunities. To, you know, give some credit to Detroit for taking people to the net and making sure that Osgood sees things and doesn't have to stop two or three in a row. So Ludwig got that one through. Keen was on the doorstep for a rebound but didn't get a chance on it. And what Detroit does right now, once they get up by a couple of goals on you, is they take away the middle of the ice and when they take away the middle of the ice, then you have no choice but to go on the perimeter and try to get Bucks in deep. And it's good to see Scotty Bowman back behind the bench of the Red Wings. The legend had surgery, had, had heart surgery, angioplasty, I think they call it. I'm not a doctor. And they don't play one even on Halloween. And also had uh, knee replacement surgery. And uh, he's on a health diet now. I guess he's dropped about 20 pounds. And Don Cherry, who's a legend up in Canada, uh, said that he, he told John Cherry he hasn't bought any new suits yet because he doesn't trust himself. So he might, <laughs> he might put, he might bulk back again. Well, you don't want to go spending money needlessly. Minor penalties to Brian Scrutlin and Thomas Holmstrom. A lot of open ice. They'll skate four on four. Zuboff and Sador. Madano and Lettman. Forward four for the Stars. Here's Lettman attacking at the line. He'll pitch it in right wing corner. Madano getting to the puck, hammered off of it, and he's down in the corner. Zuboff, a shot, rebound, they score, but Madano is loose in the corner, and I believe the play was blown dead. That was a pretty vicious elbow from Kirk Maltby, and that, he, he came in, he, you could call it a number of different things, I think. I want to have another look at it. It came down in the near side corner, down to our right. And as Madonna went back for it, Maltby came past Lidstrom and just planted right into Mike Madonna and got the, the left elbow up into the chops of Madonna. He had him lined up and threw the elbow and 
And that's that's the one thing that they're they're trying to do in this league is is take that out of it. And that's headhunting and and they've talked a lot about it. After that, the Stars with a shot and a rebound that went right to Sador and he scored. That should be a goal. And it, you would think it should be a goal, and that's what Daryl Sador was screaming at Don Van Massen over the referee. Because they had full control of the puck, and the the only way you can call it is if Van Massenhoven thinks that the player was hurt, and then he can blow it when you have the puck. But usually on a delayed penalty like that, until the other team, the defending team, the team that just fouled, ends up touching the puck and get getting control of it, then it's free reign. So it should have been a, a goal. It isn't a goal, but it is going to be a power play for Dallas, and only a two-minute minor, it looks like, to Maltby for elbowing. And so, really, the worst of all possible scenarios. A goal that probably could have counted but did not, and only a two-minute call against Maltby. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, if you're Dallas, if I'm Dallas, I want the goal because you're going up against a very good penalty-killing unit, and and you, you certainly want that before you want just the two-minute power play. Madonna looks like he's going to be fine, and uh, but it's a pretty vicious elbow that was thrown down in the corner, and Maltby is paying for a sin right now and I'm sure Mike Madonna will hop back out there in a matter of seconds to try to make him pay even more. Four on three advantage for the Stars. This is their second power play of the hockey game. They are 0 for 1. They trail 2 nothing with 546 remaining in the first period. A goal here would get them right back in the hockey game. Zuba picking his way forward. Passing it across. Sador will carry it in. Dropping it for Zuboff. High slot. The Hall a drive! And Osgood got a piece of his body in front of the puck, but it was more out of protecting himself. Just caught up to that one. Wicked shot by Hall. Lidstrom having trouble clearing. Iserman will help it out. He got it across the line, but just barely. Murphy almost was sprung for a breakaway. Zuboff walked it in. Neuendijk could wait no longer and proceeded the puck offside. 52 seconds remain in the coincidental minor penalties. 126 on the minor to Maltby. Well, Brad Hall's had two pretty good chances in the game. The first one in tight kind of jammed him. Then the last one with the pass across and the one-timer. Beautiful. That's, that's where Brad Hall likes to rip him, but he has that real whippy stick. And he was kidding a little bit about when he was playing in the Olympics last year when he was playing with Team USA. He said that one power play at one point in the game against Canada, he must have missed the net like seven times. Yeah. And it's because of that real whip he has on his stick. It's like a wet noodle. That time, good save by Osgood on the short side as he just thrust his stick at it. Madonna now comes on in Neuendijk's stead. Wins the draw outside the line. Four on three power play continuing for Dallas. Zuboff lost it to Iserman. Murphy will pick it up and shoot it down the ice. 40 seconds remaining on the power play for Dallas. Here comes Sergei Zuboff. Left wing pass to Madonna. Lots of room. He'll skate it in. Stop. Hand it off to Zuboff at the left point. Moving into the high slot. A shot. Blocked away by Osgood. Hall can't get to the rebound. Murphy clears. Well, McDonald got to the front of the net and was trying to disrupt Osgood's vision, but Osgood just stood up, looked past him, and then got the blocker on it. McDonald walks it in at the left point. They give him a lot of room. He'll hand it off to Zuboff. Right point to McDonald. High slot. Go ahead. Pull the trigger. He fakes. Now fires. That one's blocked. Draper hit the deck to knock it down. Hall a drive from the high slot. Blocked by Osgood and cleared. Holmstrom and Scrudland are on. It's a five-on-four advantage now for a half minute. Guards have outshot the wings 12-7 in the first period, but they trail 2-0. Verbeek is able to get it in. Langenbrunner cutting to the goal. A shot, and Osgood on his knees makes the save. And Jamie Langenbrunner got whacked on his way behind the net, but no call. He's dripping a little too, and that isn't Halloween fake blood, that's real blood. And it, it doesn't matter whether it's intentional or not, because you're supposed to be responsible for where your stick is. And Langenbrunner's trying to bleed as, as hard as humanly possible right now and show Van Massen over the referee, but he's not going to get the call. We had two referees here last night. Tonight only one, and Van Massenhoven was one of the refs last night. As he went in behind the net, the stick got up. McCowan's stick rode up and poked Jamie Langenbrunner in the eye. I think the ref was looking in front of the net where Verbeek was having words with one of the wings off to the other side. I think it was Ward. Jamie Langenbrunner looking like he has a Halloween mask on already here tonight. 
frightful. And the boos are raining down here as the, the fans really, they're on top of this one. They, they felt there should have been a penalty. And now someone has thrown like a bag of peanuts on the ice. If you're in the building, please refrain from doing that. Jamie Langenbrunner getting attention from Stars head athletic trainer, the best in the business, Dave Superdine. Well, Langenbrunner's the last guy to beat Chris Osgood, and that was, what, two, uh, more, two games ago, three games ago, because Osgood shut them out in game six. But it was in overtime of game number five here at Reunion when he just stepped over center ice and dialed one that eluded Chris Osgood, skipped past him, and the Stars were jubilant as they headed north up to, to Detroit for game six. You never know, and we said this again last night about shots. I love quoting Wayne Gretzky whenever we can on our sure. broadcast. And, as he's always said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And he just took a prayer from center ice, and it went in and extended the series for Dallas. A little butterfly bandage over his left eye. That was pretty close to the eye, too. It was the tip of the stick of McCall in the cut. It was purely accidental, but that's not supposed to really matter. Face off now in the Red Wing zone to the right of Chris Osgood. 16 seconds remaining. I don't see any blood. The spear of Jamie McCowan. No remnants on that. Millendike against Federoff. Stars win the draw. Left point Chambers. Putting it around behind the goal for Beak. Hit by Ward. Grant Marshall trying to center. And Doug Brown got there and cleared. That will do it for the minor penalty to Kirk Maltby. The Stars are 0 for 2 on the power play. Three shots on that one. A couple of good ones off the stick of Brad Hall, but nothing to show for it. Better off from center, gunning it in. Belfour out behind his net. He'll allow Hatcher to play it. Got his big frame up in front of Kozlov. Now Hatcher working against Kozlov and Federoff. Puck bounces up high. Kozlov hammered by Hatcher from behind. Federoff eluding a check. Puck loose along the near boards. Kozlov. I'm sure what to do. He runs into Newendike, and Grant Marshall will clear the zone. Chambers at center ice, tossing it ahead. The Detroit line for Beak, battling with Matthew Dandino. And a whistle stops play. With 3.04 left in the first period, the Red Wings two and the Stars nothing on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. trick than treat Fraser tonight for the Stars 2 nothing Detroit but the Stars have seemed to have gotten things going a little bit helped by some power play chances here this is a game where you have to you really do have to give up the puck in order to get something going because the the defensive coverage especially from Detroit side has been very very good uh, if you think you're going to wade through two or three players and that's what the Stars have done at some points is try to do too much by themselves and not enough as a group Carbono went in on Holmstrom, who ducked a check along the near boards. Reed pushing back. And with Ward in the right wing corner. Keen also there scrapping. Now Keen got it out. Back to Chambers. A drive! And that one ricocheted wide of the goal. Ludwig putting it back toward the net. Ward blocked it, then was taken down by Reed. Keen to Carbono. Now to Ludwig. Left point. A shot. And that hit the traffic in front. Went wide of the goal. A point. Whipping it all the way down the ice and icing coming up here against the Detroit Red Wings. Well, that, that's more like the shift that I think the Stars won. And it came from that line and Guy Carboneau and, and Keane and Reed. And we'll be speaking with Guy Carboneau here in just over two minutes as this period ends. And in my eyes, if, if you looked at the best Dallas star in that series against Detroit, he, he was my guy. I, yep. You know, without Joe Neuendijk, somebody had to step up. Somebody had to, to not only play that great defensive game that he's known for, but also produce offensively. He did that. The leadership is, is probably unparalleled in this league. He will join Daryl Ray upon the conclusion of the period. Hatcher keeping it in at the right point. A shot rising up over the top of the net. Hull had to put it behind for Madonna. Picked off by Shanahan, but McCarty's having trouble with it. He's hit hard from behind by Lettman. Madonna to the left point to Matt Bichuk. A shot got through, and Osgood makes the save, and now he has something to say to Don Van Massenhoven. 
about the hit in the corner. Well, Yuri Lettinen told me this morning that he sort of hurt his neck last night when he got nailed by former Red Wing Jamie Pusher in that game. This time he just tasted McCarty, and I think McCarty tried to make it look a little worse than really what it was, because Yuri Lettinen seldom hits anybody in the numbers from behind, and they're both back up and going at it again, so Lettinen <laughs> being Lettinen again. Madonna winning the draw. Matt Machuk teeing it up. His shot off a stick and wide. Shanahan cutting it around to the far boards. And the wings clear it out, but right to Madonna. Feed it to the right wing side. Hatcher firing it in. All in pursuit. Hands with Lidstrom. Picked up by Lettman. Cutting to the slot. Slap shot. They score! Hull! Got a stick on it in front. And the Stars have cut it to 2-1. This is going to be another case, though, of this line benefiting from the shift before him that Carboneau and his crew gave them, made the Red Wings play in their own zone, and then strong pursuit, and it started with Brett Hall and his forechecking down in the corner, and then Mike McDonald with a pretty good a pretty good pick on Iserman as they came across the front. They bring the puck back out and towards the net, and as Lettman shot it, Hall tipped it, and Osgood missed it. The shot on goal, the tip in front, I'm sure, there was a screen there as well, and you're right. The lead's cut in half. 2-1. 120 to play. Detroit started strong, but Dallas has been clawing their way back into this game. What a first period. Here's Ludwig. He'll scamper it forward. Kesmer rifling it in. Scrutland giving chase. Osgood getting there first. He'll play to the near side. Verbeek in the draw hit. Draper went down. Verbeek is down. Dandino to the far side. Ludwig well down for the start. Verbeek behind the goal. He hits McCown. They clear to the right point. Chambers a shot into the slot. Verbeek takes his man down. There's going to be a penalty coming up here against the Dallas Stars. Well, Van Massenhoven let it go. He let it go. He let it go. And finally, he'd seen enough. Well, the Stars have kind of pulled the Red Wings out into the alley now. And Verbeek with a slew foot in front of the net on Dan Dano is the reason why he'll go off. They, they stood around and chased for the first half of the period, and since then, they've been in the Red Wings' face, and they've initiate, initiated everything. Right in front of the net, Verbeek just, just got leverage up top on Dan Dano and kicked the feet out underneath, and that's what a slew foot is. So if you ever wonder what a slew foot is, that's what it is. Brett Hall is the guy who has the goal for the Stars. That's now... 56 goals for Hall if, they, if it remains that way. And that's the way it looked to us. It'll be 56 goals for him in 63 games against the Detroit Red Wings. Sounds eerily familiar to when he was a St. Louis Blue against the Dallas Stars. The only team against whom he has more career goals, the Dallas Stars. That will change. I've worked eerily into the show twice already, too. It, it's been a nice night for him. Wings on a power play, half a minute to go in the period. They lead it 2-1. to one. Dallas needs to get out of the period without surrendering a goal here. Matt Pichuk hits Shanahan. Lindstrom holds at the left point. They give him room, he slides to Murphy, right point. His drive off Carbon and wide. Shanahan to pick it up. Right circle, his shot blocked by Matt Pichuk. Carbon loving it. Go! And he's able to send it down the ice. That's Keith Carbonell. His stick was tied up. He blocked the shot first, and then a second effort to get it down. Oh, and Hatcher brings the period to a crashing halt as he rubs out Thomas Holmstrom at center ice. Well, they got back some real estate. They, they, they capitulated early in this period, and then with Feist and some determination, they came back. Holmstrom just got the puck, and then he got nailed. Good first period. What a period. The Red Wings, two. The Dallas Stars, one. Don't go anywhere. A Halloween treat for you from Reunion Arena on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. One, Detroit over Dallas after one period of play. This interview is brought to you by Chase Texas. The right relationship is everything. Well, some tremendous work by Guy Carbonel late in that period in a penalty killing role, and they get it out and they they continue on. Uh, Guy Carbonel, I thought, was the best player for the Dallas Stars in the series against Detroit last 
spring. He joins us from downstairs outside the Stars locker room. Uh, Guy, would you agree with me? Uh, was that some of the best hockey that you played in, in your career last spring? I think so. I think, uh, you know, during your season, the season is important, but I think that's where you, you make a stand is in the, in the playoff and uh, how we seem to be able to uh, raise my level of play when, uh, when the playoff comes in. That period seemed like almost two periods. Uh, you dropped behind 2 nothing early. It looked like you guys were chasing a little bit. Then you really took back a lot of momentum in the latter half. Well, I, I think it started yesterday in, in, the, in the third period. And, and uh, you know, right at the start of this first period, we seemed to be tentative. Like, you know, we, we don't want to go after the puck. We uh, kind of scared to make a mistake and uh, give them a little bit much, uh, too much room uh, to make plays and, and to skate with the puck. Uh, I think our, our style is to go after the puck carrier uh, don't give him chances, and, uh, you know, I think we did that a little bit more at the end. It's Halloween tonight. I'm sure you guys at ice level have noticed an awful lot of mass and what have you, uh, not only on the two goaltenders, but around the rink. What are you going as tonight? I'd, I'd like to be a scorer. <laughs> well, go out and do it. You have 40 minutes left. Thank you, Razor. Thanks for doing this. That's Guy Carboneau, and for being our guest, Guy will get a gift certificate from our friends at Lombardo Custom Apparel. <laughs> Lots more to come. I don't know whether that person's dressed up as a scorer or not. Some people are here tonight. A couple of Red Wings and one Dallas Star. Two to one Detroit over Dallas in the first intermission on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. Back to Reunion Arena. Razor, the Wings got on the board first and second. Uh, it's, again, they, they just murder you with those 10-foot passes, especially if you turn the puck over in your own zone. That's what happened. Closer with a little nudge to the middle of the ice, and Maltby with a one-timer went off the pad of Belfour and passed him. Maltby second of the season at 112 from Joey Koser. It was one nothing Wings. Then on the power play, they went to work again, and again, the, the quick puck movement. You know, nobody picked up Steve Eiserman on the near side. Murphy, you must have eyes in the back of his head, spotted him creeping in, fed it over on the left wing side, and he made it 2 nothing. Steve Eiserman's third of the season. It comes on a power play at 834 from Murphy and Holmstrom. The Wings led 2 nothing. then a curious turn of events in the Detroit zone. Yeah, down in the corner, Mike McDonald took an elbow to the head. They got the puck back out in front. Sador gets the rebound past Osgood. The ref had his arm in the air. He blew it down. He thought Madonna was hurt. They did get a power play out of it. But later, Brett Hall with the tip in front of the net as Yuri Lettinen let it go from the top of the circle. And that's where we're at right now. Brett Hall's first regular season goal as a Dallas star in Reunion Arena. His second of the season at 18:32. Lettinen set him up. 2-1 the score, all the makings of a title fight. We'll come back and have the second period on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. You came from distance and relatively easy saves for Osgood. Face-offs 50-50, and that's understandable. Two very good, very veteran center ice crews on both sides of the puck. Only power play goal in the game so far. Detroit, they're one for two. Dallas is 0 for 2 on theirs. It's been a rough game, but not a highly penalized game. Only six penalty minutes aside in that first period. The Detroit Red Wings will begin the second period with a frightening chance on the power play. 1-11 remains in a minor penalty to Pat Verbeek. Detroit is 1 for 2 with the man advantage already. Eiserman, Shanahan, Holmstrom. Up front, Fedorov on the point on the power play with Larry Murphy. Madonna, Lettman, Matt Machuk, and Hatcher, the penalty killers with Ed Belfort to begin the second period. Stars in their third jerseys tonight. Second straight night. Wings in their normal home whites and a shot from Shanahan blocked by Belfort right to Matt Machuk. He'll guide it ahead to Madonna. Here he comes with Lettman, two on two, shorthanded. Madonna steps around, Fedorov to Lettman, he scores! Scotty Bowman's got a problem. And I don't know whether it's with his lineup or he didn't like something that he saw on the ice. What I don't think he really liked was the fact that Madonna was isolated on a forward, and it was Fedorov. If, if you're going to have any forward playing defense in your Detroit, you would want Sergei Fedorov, but he just got walked around down the far side, and then Madonna with great vision 
spotted Lettinen busting in, and Lettinen beat Osgood Udova cross head first, and it's a tie hockey game. First shorthanded goal of the season by the Stars, the first shorthanded goal that Detroit has given up. Lettinen's fourth from Madano and Matt Michuk, and the Stars have tied the game at two, and now get to a puck, Sador will clear it down. What a start to this second period for Dallas. Murphy will bring it ahead. And Carbono steps up to block it. Took the wind right out of the Red Wings' sails. Fedorov makes the turn in his own zone. He got abused by Mike Madano on that play. He'll go back and pick it up. Watched by Keene. Penalty is over to Pat Verbeek. Red Wings are one for three. And they've yielded a shorthanded goal. Wings are right back in, but Hatcher is able to get it to Keene. He'll use the boards and get it out. Igor Larionov taking it back into his own zone. And away from the play, a tripping penalty coming up. It happened at center ice, and quite frankly, I didn't see it. Well, Craig Ludwig tripped LaPointe right at almost dead on the star at center ice. And LaPointe did his job. He was just looking for something along that line. And and he got it. It wasn't a very intelligent penalty to take, even if it was a, if Craig Ludwig feels that it was a, a dive on his part because it was so close to the referee. So just as they came into center, right, he just sort of tapped him, and then he, LaPointe went down. So, you know, you, you try to give your sided advantage in any way you can, but there'll be more of that as it, as it goes on. But this game is is deteriorating into nothing but special teams and if the stars penalty killing can be as explosive as they were to start this period then perhaps it's a good thing for ken hitchcock and his squad red wings 20.8 percent coming into the game they are one for three they gave up a shorthanded wings are in here's kozlov walking into the right wing corner playing it around behind Arianov can't handle it now gets it back along the boards to kozlov back of the net as LaPointe heading for the slot, tries to feed it that way, but Chambers picks it off and clears. 30 seconds gone on the power play for Detroit. 2-2 Two -two the score. Lidstrom ahead to Lariano. The turn and drops it. Brown will carry it in to LaPointe. To Brown in the right wing corner. Gave it away. Matt Machuk will pick it up and clear. Good penalty killing by the Stars. Osgood smartly ahead to Brown. Now to Fedorov. He'll attack, but lost it to Carbono. Trailing the play is Lidstrom. He'll drag it in, right wing side, and into the corner. Back to Iserman. A shot. He gunned it wide from the right point. Brown at the left point. Tossing it around behind the goal. Iserman checked by Matt Michuk. McCarty walked up with Hatcher in the right corner. Fished out by Iserman. On top to Brown. His shot. He gunned it wide. Fedorov walked into Hatcher, now stumbles. McCarty back out to the right point. Lidstrom fakes, now fires. It's blocked by Carbono again. Right to Matt Machuk, off the glass and down the ice. Sorry, that one hurt. That one stung Carbono. Both penalty killing units up front have really contested the two very, very smart quarterbacks on the power plays. Lidstrom for Detroit and Zubov whenever the Stars have been on their power play. They're the key guys. 15 seconds remaining in the Detroit power play. They'll bring it ahead. Here's Larry Murphy slamming it in. Winds around to Belfour's right along the far board. Zuboff trying to find the puck. One of the wings falling on top of it. It was LaPointe. Chambers will pick it up behind his goal. He'll throw it ahead at center ice to Keene. Now to Scrudland. At the Detroit line, they'll play it in. Ludwig is on. Stars kill off another power play advantage for Detroit. The wings try and get it out. Langenbrunner from the board stole it and whipped the wild shot wide of the goal. Shanahan will relay it to the Dallas line. That's where Zuboff picks it up to Chambers. In the middle of the ice for Neuendijk. Got out of the way of a hit by Anders Eriksson. And Shanahan only plays it across the Dallas line. But Chambers there to take it away. And they'll clear it down the ice. No icing here. Eriksson in pursuit. Marshall lines him up and hammers him into the corner boards. The Wings clear it down. Belfour way out of his goal. He hands it to McCarty in the corner. He's jammed by Matt Michuk. Maltby following the play. Neuendijk keeping a guardful eye on him. But Langenbrunner rescues, and he'll scamper ahead to center ice and then pitch it in. 15.44 to play in the second period. We're all even at two. Dallas Stars and the Detroit Red Wings. Neuendijk to Matt Michuk. A shot in front. 
and it's relayed off Osgood and wide of the goal. Penalty coming up here against the Detroit Red Wings. When we come back, the Stars will have a chance to take the lead with the most dangerous power play in hockey on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. It's an idea. Eight and a half remaining second period. Tie hockey game at two, and the Stars going on the power play after Matt Kachuk fired it on goal. Right in the numbers. McCarty hit Langenbrunner from behind with the cross check, so that's why they have the extra man. Third power play of the game for Dallas. They're 0 for 2. Madonna wins the draw to Zuboff. Back to Madonna. They play catch. Zuboff has it to Sador in the left point. They'll go down low to Lettman. On a hull. Back to Sador. To Zuboff. Right point. Frank fires. Tip wide of the goal. Murphy trying to corral it. Lettman and Madonna pester him. Hull. Found the puck, played it up the near boards. Maltby can't clear. Madonna holds it in. The Zubov had to reach for it along the far side. He'll just jam it around behind. Letman in pursuit. They clear, not out. Sador, oh, it bounced off his stick. The center ice, he gave it away. There's Draper, short-handed. He's in. He shoots. Save. Go for it. But a penalty coming up here against the Stars for slashing. <laughs> Well, another brain freeze, and, you know, we've seen this a couple times in the games. Sador thought that the puck was flat, and then when he tried to get it back across to, to Zuboff, it was up on end. He got nothing on it. He thought he'd just be able to swing around, and Draper was cutting right through the middle, and Draper had to set a jets on him. And right through the middle of the ice, great save by Eddie Belfort. Good pass by Sador to spring him, too. And then as he was being hauled down, Belfort got the left pad and arm on it. So that's where the penalty was. Zuboff in the penalty box. It is the first time this season, Razor, that Sergei Zuboff has found himself in the penalty box. And so we'll play four on four for 121. Barring any future calls, the Red Wings will go on their fifth power play advantage when McCarty steps on the ice. Arian Hatcher behind his goal. Hatcher and Matvichuk for the Stars. Carbono and Reed up front. Better off with a steal, but Matvichuk works him over along the far boards. He'll drop it off to Erickson, who walks it down, hands it back to Fedorov at the left point. Got the shot away, but Carbono blocked it. And here come the Stars, three on two. At the Detroit line, Reed is in a step ahead of the play offside as Matt Pichuk hesitated just a moment. And another block by Guy Carbono. It looked like the one earlier caught him in the instep. That one, I think, caught him on equipment. He was pretty good between periods. He missed it. He said, I asked him if he wanted to be tonight for Halloween. We can address it. He said, I'd like to be a goal scorer. <laughs> And he was a goal scorer in that series. Last year, he was one of the higher scorers for Dallas in the series. Lettman had a great series against the Red Wings with three goals. He led the team in that category, and he's been instrumental in both goals they scored here tonight. Stars are in possession of the puck. Chambers behind his goal, now steps out. Hands it off to Madonna. Still four on four for 40 seconds. Here's Madonna with speed, cutting it from long range, wide of the goal. It's loose, and it hops right to Chris Osgood. The Red Wings got discombobulated in front of their own goal. That is a word, is it not? It is in my book. Yes. Madonna's starting to look more like Madonna as this game goes on. Maybe that elbow by Maltby woke him up a little bit because he was not playing very well the last oh, three or four games. And, and there was a real spark missing, and he's complained about a lack of energy in his legs, that his legs are gold. It's the reason he's the player that he is. Part of it, anyway. The other part is that his hands keep up to the blazing speed that he has, and there's only a mitt full of guys in the NHL that that can say that about their game. There's a lot of guys who can fly, but their hands are left way behind them, and they can't make plays. He can. Now he wins the draw, and Hall rips one. Osgood releases. Design play razor. They had Hall right off of Madonna on the circle. They got it to him, and he just gunned it. Jammed him a little, little bit again. Tough, you know, a guy playing his off wing, a lot of times they end up getting jammed. Now Eiserman will carry it in. He'll stop in the left wing corner, but lost it to Hall. He's able to push it to center ice. Wings attacking. Lariana dropping it. Eiserman a shot. Deflected wide of the goal. McCarty is on. Power play for the wing. But the Stars are able to clear it out. Half a minute remaining on Zuboff's minor penalties. 
from center ice Shanahan takes the feed he's in for a drive Belfour shot got down to both knees and hangs on to it Eddie Belfour mentioned this morning that and, and if you go back if you follow what went on last year they the Red Wings had one thing in mind and that was to get Eddie Belfour off Eddie Belfour's game and they sent LaPointe and they sent Holmstrom to the front of the net and, and they got him off his game sometimes and you know he would deny it but you know I, I think there's some areas of those players that that would support that he got off a little bit. I asked him, you know, what are you going to do? And he said he didn't know. The guy's got it in his face. said, I don't know if I'll just leave him alone and look past him. There's a shot. Or if I'll, you know, defend my turf. He hasn't really had that much action in front of him. That was a hot one off the face up and a good save. In the playoff series last year, in the six-game series that Dallas lost, Osgood was a 1.67 goals against and a 9.38 save percentage. Eddie, 2.51 and 8.97. Clearly the battle went to Osgood. Shanahan will fish it out. Ten seconds left on the Detroit power play. Hatcher grappling. Shanahan putting it around behind the goal to Fedorov. They center it. Keen is there. Fedorov got plastered by Hatcher in the corner. Zuboff is on. The wings are one for five on the power play. And we're still tied at two. Approaching the midway point of the hockey game. Carboneau from center ice will whip it in. Osgood out to get it. He toss it up the near boards to Brown. Verbeek went after him. Brown retreating, gave it to Murphy, who uses the far boards to send it down the ice. No icing here. They wave it off. Chambers will pick it up, move it quickly ahead to Dan Kesner. He'll roll it down the boards. After it, pounds Dandino. Chambers along the right wing side, kicking it. Now behind the goal. He attempted to center. Screwed land to Kesmer, and he relayed it just wide. And the Red Wings start ahead. Mulphy, right wing attack at the Dallas line. One wing has a measure and crosses him. And then McCarty comes in with a flying elbow on Verbeek. Nothing called on that. One wing and Mulphy battle. The puck spun to the far side. Scrooglin legging after it. He hits Draper. And he's able to advance it to Verbeek. It was hit from behind by Mulphy, and he's going. Get his job. That's what he wanted to do. Stars on the power play again when we continue on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. Dodge Ram was the first. Just under 12 to go, second period, 2-2 score. Craig Ludwig may have lost a, a half a step, but he plays geometry very well, and he just pinched his man off and then threw a thundering hip check down in the corner. And then as Verbeek came in there, he kicked some people off. They carried on back up the boards towards the, the middle of the ice and by the Detroit bench, and Maltby had a little over-exuberant on Pat Verbeek, who was just looking to draw a penalty, and he did. Fourth power play of the night for da Dallas. Excuse me, they are 0 for 3. Game tied at 2, 11.45 remaining in the game, or in the second period, rather. Red Wings jumped to a 2-0 lead in the first period, but Dallas has scrambled back, and here comes Neuendijk, hard into the Detroit zone, tried to hit the slot in for Beak. Play goes behind the net, they center it again, but it comes right to McCarty, and shorthanded, he'll attack at the Dallas line. Chambers and Hatcher back, and McCarty fires it off the side of the goal. Hatcher will pick it up for the Stars. Climb to center ice. Cover beat. He's in. To Langenbrunner, left wing side. Around behind the net to Neuendijk. Federoff sticked it away. Verbeek will pick it up. Hatcher sneaking down. Neuendijk goes back to the other point. That's where Zuboff has it. Now to Hatcher. To Langenbrunner. Left wing half boards. Challenged. He goes back to Hatcher. A drive. Gunned it wide. Zuboff. Moving in, he's cut down by Fedorov, and the puck is clear. There's some hard play on the puck. You better really want the puck if you go after it, because somebody's going to want it more than you. You're going to get hacked, you're going to wh get whacked, you're going to get knocked down. Letnin after it for the Stars. On the near boards, Hall. To Letnin in the left wing corner. Got it around Lidstrom to Madano. Centering pass, blocked by Murphy. He goes down, so does Madano. Puck stays in the Detroit zone. Zuboff tied up along the near boards. Letnin fishes it out. Sador from Madano cutting to the net. A backhander just wide of the goal. Zuboff will pick it up again. High slot. Now to Madano. Right circle. Watched by Lidstrom. Zuboff, his shot. The one off Sador's stick. Hall picking it up along the near boards. And the Red Wings clear it. Wow. What a pace. 
Ten seconds remaining in the power play for Dallas. Madonna left it at his own line for Zubak. He sends it back to Madonna, but the play is across two lines. Well, the, if they meet in the conference finals again, it'll be what, early June, as it is, as the NHL goes on and on in the summertime. Don't tell these two teams that it's just a game at oh. the end of October that only meets two points in the schedule, because they're certainly not playing that way. And the titanic battles for real estate down there at ice level and you know finish everybody with enthusiasm and with a bit of a growl and that's the way they've played so far the the special teams we've seen plenty of it but it's been high octane special teams from both sides whether it's penalty killing or power plays this, this is turning into the game we thought we'd see 950 left in the second period 2-2 the score Maltby is on Dallas now 0 for 4 on the power play Maltby brings the puck across the Dallas line. Larry on off in the right corner around the Kozlov behind the goal. He falls. Carbono over skates. Chambers will pick it up. Use the boards and get it out. Grant Marshall tossing it ahead to the Detroit line. Erickson backing up. Now getting a return pass from Ward. Up ahead to Kozlov at center. Across the stripe. Got it in. The right corner in the Dallas zone. Reed gets to the puck. Brings it around behind to the far side. Kozlov ducks under a check from Marshall. Who I think stuck the leg out and is going to get nabbed for tripping. A lot of penalties. It's just one after another. And Grant Marshall's going to go off for that one along the far boards. It just it just seems like as soon as as soon as one team gets back to full strength and the other side takes a penalty and vice versa. He came in and as the player stepped away, maybe trailed his leg a little bit and that was what was called. Marshall had a multitude of scoring chances in that series against Detroit and just couldn't put anything past Osgood. And that was part of the problem that the Stars had was that you know the players on the third and fourth line for them just couldn't couldn't stash and and the guys that play the third and fourth line for Detroit did. You know the the Maltbys and the Drapers and people like that, you know, made the most of their chances because Scotty Bowman plays four lines. He plays everybody with everybody all season long, and it really showed, I think, in that series. Yes, it did. Marshall for tripping at 10:47. Wings going on their sixth power play of the game. They're one for five, but they've given up a shorthanded goal. The game is tied at two. Midway through the contest, Holmstrom will pick it up. Holmstrom, Shanahan, and Eiserman up front. Lidstrom and Murphy, the point men. The Stars battle hard, and they're able to work it down the ice. Well, number 96, Holmstrom. This may be the time when they get it back to near the point, and, and then he just goes to the front of the net. He's like a net magnet. He just gravitates to there. Lidstrom hammering it in. Winds around to the right wing boards. Shanahan tried to shovel it in front and hit, skipped right to Strudlin. He'll send it Osgood's way. Detroit's put Murphy and Lidstrom back together on the points. They'd split them up on two different power play units and now they're on the same one Shanahan at center he's bothered by Keen got it across at the line met with some resistance Matt Pachuk scrapping with Holmstrom Eiserman tried to center it it hopped away from him to Keen off the boards held in at the left point Lidstrom teeing it up firing it's blocked in the slot cleared to the line and out that's commitment anytime you see block shots and lots of them it means the commitment level is at a, at a really high level and it is right now Eiserman is in Dallas is outshot Detroit on the power play, four to three. The Wings on their sixth power play opportunity, so not many getting to the net. Kozlov is in, left circle, slap shot, go for it! Watches it all the way into the leather and hangs onto it. Well, those are the two guys that, that you'd expect to hook up. Kozlov last year against Dallas, they played 11 games, or he did against the Stars, if you include the playoffs along with the regular season. He had five goals in those 11 games and eight points, and he was their leading scorer in the regular season. I remember every time the team teams played against one another last year, it always seemed like his number was coming up whenever we were marking down goals and assists. The silent assassin doesn't say anything, very quiet. Guys on his team say you don't even know he's there. He has no goals yet this season. There's a shot from the left point. Zuboff blocked it. Lariana falls. Letnin will pick it up. He finds Madonna with center. One on one against Brown. Can he school him too? He does. He dives after the puck and couldn't quite find it. He has that jump. He has that jump back. He wants to jump by people. He wants to make plays. 18 seconds left in the power play for Detroit. Kozlov got it in. Brown at the left point. 
putting it behind the Dallas goal, a point. Into the corner for Kozla. Back out on top, Erickson, a drive, blockered away by Ed Belfour, right to Mike Madonna. He'll make the turn and bring it ahead of center. Trying to move his way past three wings at the line. Marshall comes on, the power play is over, the wings are one for six. Yeah, both sides are just killing him off now. They want to kill him off. Neuendijk picks it up in stride, takes it into the Detroit zone. Lost it in the near corner, fights to get it back. Langenbrunner trying to help out. Neuendijk surrounded by three white shirts. Draper pinned by Langenbrunner. They battle hard along the board, but the Red Wings are able to guide it ahead. Matthew Dandino sprinting to the Dallas line, right wing side. Tossing it around Matt to Chuck Belfer out to play it around behind his goal. Marshall in pursuit. They shovel it toward the Dallas goal. Belfort puts it behind. McCarty centering. That winds up on Marshall's stick. He can't clear. Matt Bichuk over skating. And a penalty coming up here. And I think it's against Detroit. Elbowing the call. 6.28 to play in the second. We're still tied at two on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. How to spot a Six and a half to go here in the second period. Elbowing the call on Chris Draper, although I don't think it was elbowing. You got the gloves up on Matt Bichuk. There's been a lot worse than that, but they, he is calling both sides, and the parade continues to the sin bin. This is the fifth power play of the game for Dallas. They're 0 for 4. Detroit's had six. They're 1 for 6, but also they've surrendered a shorthanded goal. We're tied at 2, 6-16 to play in the second. Zubov from center, gun it in. Around behind the goal to the near side, Hall. Walking up there. Madonna in the corner. Back out on top to Zubov. Low fire save. Osgood. Osgood's been very good at controlling his rebounds because the Stars, really from the start of the game, have gotten shots through. A lot of them from 60 feet or so. But if he spits them back out in front, leaves those obese rebounds, they end up behind you. So he's been good in that category. Remember last year in the in the playoffs in that series, and I know we go back to it, but it, you have to when these two teams are meeting one another again for the first time. The Stars' power play scored in only one of the six games, whereas Detroit's power play scored in four of the six. And it doesn't have to be a lot of goals, but it was consistent. They always got that goal from their special teams that enabled them to be one better. And the Stars just couldn't find it in that series. And, and that was part of the problem. And that was a big part of, of Joe Neuendijk not being there and Sergei Zubov being injured. Madonna, Hall, and Lettman up front. Zubov and Sador, the pointman, on the power play for Dallas. Stars after the puck. Lettman going behind the goal. The referee Van Massenhoven falls. Lettman will pick it up in the right wing corner. Tried to get it to Hall, but McCarty anticipated well. He'll gun it up the near boards. Not out. Sador holding it there. Floating it across and diving to make the play. Darren McCarty who went a long way to get to that puck and clear it. Yeah, gritty penalty killing by McCarty down low around his net and then the second effort near the blue line. Here's Hall winding his way to center. Now to Madonna at the Detroit line. Lost the puck, and Fedorov finds it and bounces it down the ice. Belfort will set it up for Daryl Sador. 50 seconds left on the Dallas power play. Zuba moving it ahead to Joe Neuendijk. He'll whip it in. On the left wing boards, Verbeek will find it. Couldn't get there in time, however. Getting there ahead of Verbeek was Brown. He smashes it down the ice. A minute remaining on the Dallas power play. Langenbrunner racing to the Detroit line. It hit the linesman. And the play is offside. And then Brown and Verbeek went tumbling to the ice. Well, the game now, and one of the questions that, that you ask before a game like this is who dictates the style of the game? And I think Detroit was dictating a little bit early. Not a lot, but they, they had the edge and got a couple of goals early. Went up two to nothing, but since then there's been speed bumps all over the ice and and they've really slowed things down the stars have and it's been a real you know grunt game since about the 10 minute 15 minute mark of that first period and that really plays into the hands of dallas face off outside the red wing line 27 seconds remaining in the minor penalty to chris draper for elbowing hatcher the chambers at the dallas line that's for one more rush on the power play Stars get it ahead. Neuendijk rattling it in. In pursuit, Hatcher. To the puck. It's cleared around. Chambers, pressing the issue, is able to keep it alive to Langenbrunner. Tried to get it across to Verbeek. It was blocked. And the point and Larionov combined to clear the zone. What a read by Larionov after a brilliant 
skill play by Langenbrunner. Now Draper, who's hot out of the box, steals it and guns it over the top of the net. Dallas 0 for 5 on the power play tonight. Pass ahead into the Detroit zone. Dan Dano bothered, and Langenbrunner was in pursuit. Erickson will pick it up, guided ahead to Steve Eiserman. Left wing pass out of Shanahan's reach inside the Dallas line. Fedor got there to poke it to Zuboff along the far side. He'll clear it up to Keene, and he'll toss it out. Sador picking it up in stride at center, corralled the bouncing puck, got it across the line, but the wings promptly clear. 3.50 left in the second. 2-2 Two -two the score. Keene guiding it ahead. Scrudland tossing it in. Down behind the goal, Osgood pushing it into the corner. McCarty trying to play it up the boards. Kesmer going hard after it. He and Dandino go hard into the end board. Puck in the right corner, McCarty. Hester there. Escapes the check from Keene and sends it ahead. Great catch by Eiserman. He's in for a blast, and it's blocked it away by Belfour. Matt Bichuk will clear. Aaron Ward will pick it up at the Detroit line. Got it ahead. Maltby twists, puts it into the zone, then took a hit from Carbino. Matt Bichuk missed it. Centered in front for Maltby and Reed. The only man on the puck at center ice. He's overtaken by a couple of wings, but got the puck into the Detroit zone nonetheless. McCown makes the turn and clears it ahead. Right wing pass for Draper. He's into the Dallas zone. Stops. Threads it in front. And Belfort will take no chances. He'll cover it up. With 2.49 to play in the second period, and the game tied at two on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. We come here on a glorious quest. 27 on the TV side. This very carrier, and of course, News Talk 820 WBAB. Then Dallas at LA and at Phoenix. Or Phoenix, rather, comes here. The Stars return home. May want to stay up late for that one in San Jose. Yes. Face up in the Dallas zone. McCown shoveled it through the traffic and wide of the goal. Reed getting there along the near boards. Can't clear it out. On the line, Brown fires it. Got to Belfort weakly. He tapped it to the far boards. Wings putting some pressure on here. Brown centering. McCown will pick it up at the left point. Turns and fires it. It's blocked in the slot. And the Stars will carry it out. Reed tugged at by Brown. Got it ahead to Carbono at the line. But the play is offside. And the Stars have really clogged. They've they clogged the front of their net. And it's difficult, A, for the blue liners for the Red Wings to get pucks through to the point cleanly towards Belfort. And the other thing, it's very difficult for them to go east-west to move pucks through the seam. And, and that's their game. And, and they can do it. And if you allow them to do that, they'll carve you up. They'll surgically carve you up in your own zone. And, this has really been a Dallas game in the second period. It's the way they want to play this team. It's the game they wanted to play out here tonight. Your high-level guys have, have used their assets, and your, your grunts and your soldiers have played their game. So good team effort. Face off outside the Red Wing line. Larianoff besting Madano. Lidstrom in his own zone, handing it off, and then getting it back from Kozlov. Not a Murphy. Wings break out to center ice, but Chambers picks it off. Letnin will start in for the Dallas Stars. Turning it around behind the goal, Madonna tying up with Larry Murphy and a penalty call for hooking. This is a good call. As Madonna was, was pursuing the puck, he got hooked from behind and it allowed the, the wings to catch up to him. They can't believe it. Just as Madonna was fighting his way to the net, I think it, the penalty should be on Larry Onoff for the hook as Madonna tried to get by, but I don't think he's the guy going off. They have Lidstrom's number up on the board. I didn't see Nick Lidstrom do anything. Oh, now, that, there we go. <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait, Nick Lidstrom's so good at his position at playing just off of people that he rarely has to do things like that. Larry Onoff had lost position on, on Mike McDonald, who's quicker than him and bigger than him, and got the stick on and stopped skating. And they, they called it water skiing. Remember a couple of years ago, we got that tape from the yes, league, yes. and Brian Burke and, and Brian Lewis were going over and over what water skiing is, and you can't do that. For the most part, the players have really adapted to that, and we don't see it very often. We saw it there, though. Stars dearly need their power play to do something for them. Madonna, Letnan, Hall, Zuboff, and Sador. Dallas winning the draw, Sador. Left point. Wrist shot, right on. Osgood made the save. McCarty tried to clear. Zuboff holding it in at the point. They go down into the corner. Madonna legging after it. He and Lidstrom scrap behind the goal. Holland to join the party. He'll clear it out to Sador at the left point. 
Tossing it across to the right wing corner. Madonna there ahead of Lidstrom. He left it. Well, they poke it up the far side, but right to Zuboff. He'll hold it in. To Sador at the left point. Into the middle of the ice for Hall. A race shot. Osgood almost knocked it into his own net. Loose behind the goal. Hall. Back out to Sador at the left point. Down low to Madonna. Setting up in front. And Hall are letting and couldn't find it. It's loose in the crease. And where is it? Still loose. They scrap for it. Yeah, I think it's covered. And is it covered by a Red Wing player or the goaltender Osgood? Now well, they're giving it to Osgood, I think. Well, McCarty kept bunting it back into his goaltender. Darren McCarty's been the best Red Wing in the second period. And I say that, and I point out also after it that most of that good play has been in his own zone. But Donna wanted to get in front. Then he had Lettinen right in front. And Lettinen got jammed from behind by McCarty, who got back just in the nick of time. And then they all searched for the mouse in the barn down around the net. And if remember, if one of the, the Red Wing forwards puts his glove on it in the, in the crease and freezes it, it's a penalty shot. Error on Osgood on the pop fly, and it almost went off his glove and behind him and in. And Osgood was a little ticked off after the whistle finally blew. Face off in the Detroit zone to the right of Chris Osgood. Dallas got to the draw, but it hops to the Dallas line. Sador will pick it up. Advancing it, but Aaron Ward got there. He'll pitch it out and into the seats and out of play and almost hit referee Don Van Massenhoven with his stick on the follow-through. Aaron Ward didn't play any of the games in the series at all against Dallas last year. Didn't, didn't play. Uh, Dave Reed from the star side, he didn't play at all in the in the series as well as they went with more speed and it was interesting to watch as that thing went on Ward's played a lot here early in the season of course as we told you earlier they, they lost Rouse they lost Batiste off there's no Uwe Krupp in the lineup here tonight who they picked up in the free agency so some other people are eating some minutes final minute of play in the second period stars on the power play for the bulk of it Zuboff at the right point setting it up Went down the boards to Neuendijk, who slaps it to Lang and put it to Verbeek back in the net. In front for Neuendijk, and it just missed him. Zuboff will pick it up at the right point. Shot it into the slot, but right to Draper, and the wings will clear it down the ice. Now Belfour out to get it up the boards. Neuendijk makes the turn across to Zuboff. He'll carry it in. Now peel to his right, whip it around behind the goal. Osgood got there, the star center! A collision in front, and the wings get the puck! They set up Langenbrunner. There was an empty net. Osgood scrambled to get back, and somehow he and Maltby kept it out of the goal. Now Ward and Verbeek are dueling in behind the net, the net off its moorings. I think Maltby got either kicked or punched or got a stick. The Johnny Ward and the Red Wing trainer is out attending to him. It was just a lot of humanity that came diving back into the crease area. And stuff that one. Neuendijk had it behind the net quickly in front. Langenbrunner was right there all alone. Let it go. Verbeek ended up on his fanny in the net. And I'm not sure whether it was Osgood or Mulpey. I kind of think it was Mulpey that got back across and stopped the puck. I think he did. I think that's why he was hurt. Never good to stop it with your, your face or your throat. Leave it to the guy with the silly pads behind you. Well, the guy with the silly pads was having trouble getting back into his spot. Razor, the commitment level, though, that you've talked about in this hockey game, I mean, guys diving to block pucks with their face, that'll tell you something about what kind of a hockey game yeah, we've they, got tonight. You know, they both sides talk about it, that, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to mean anything. We'd like to play well. Yeah, but, right. And Mike Keane was right. I think he said it best when he said that, you know, if we win the game tonight, we don't win the Stanley Cup. And if we lose the game tonight, we don't lose the Stanley Cup. But underneath all of that is the fact that these are two teams that are very evenly matched. One team wants what the other team has and has had the last two years, and that's the Stanley Cup. And Mike Keene knows all about that because he's won a couple of them. And they've played like there's something on the line here tonight. And all that's on the line here tonight is a little bit of early season bragging rights. 20 seconds left in the power play for Dallas, 22 and a half in the second period. The shot's 22-14 in favor of the Stars. The game is tied at two. Face off to Osgood's left, Steve Eiserman against Mike Madonna. Eiserman won the draw, but Lettinen hustled after it. Makes it around to Hall, left point. Over to Zuboff, top of the right circle. To Hall, a shot, it's blocked. Wings can't clear it out. 10 seconds left in the period, Sador. Hall touches it over to Zuboff. Back to Sador, off the boards. Lettinen 
deflected it wide of the goal, and the second period is history. Stars got a little creative there. They they bumped Hall back out to the point along with Zubov and snuck Sador down a little lower to try to load that big gun that Brett Hall has. The only goal of the period, Yere Lettinen, set up smartly on a shorthanded tally, and the Stars early in the second period evened it at two. Tonight's game is brought to you by the new Dodge. Dropping behind two to nothing, it's now 2-2 between the Detroit Red Wings and the Stars in the second intermission. Welcome back to Reunion Arena, everybody. Daryl Ray upstairs here, and it's that time again when we check out what kind of email we got recently. We go to the Miller Lite Open Net, and tonight's question, a good one pertaining to the tools of the trade. John Ralph from Dallas would like to know how many sticks each player has on the bench at game time. And uh, the guy who's responsible, or one of the two guys who are responsible for all the equipment that the Stars have to, uh, to work with is assistant equipment manager, Mr. Matthews. So we'll defer to him and he'll answer your question for you right now. Well, John, that's a great question. Each guy is responsible for putting out their own sticks before the game. We as trainers take them down to the bench and have them there ready for them in case they break them during a game. But each guy puts out between two and three sticks so we can have them ready for them. But the goalies, they put out about four sticks because they take the most shots during the game and they break quite easily. Remember, if you have a question, all you have to do is log on to the Stars website. And uh, that website is www.dallastars.com. We get piles of them. We sort through them. And we answer the best ones. Good one tonight, John, and uh, glad to fix it up for you. There are the sticks right there. There's a whole bundle of them. A quart of wood behind the bench for the Stars. Should be a great third period. Stars and the Wings are deadlocked at two on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. Razor, the Wings led this game 2 0, then 2 1. They were on a power play to begin the second period. Yeah, early in that second period, you don't give Madonna and Letton in time and space. and. Madonna earned his time by stepping around Fedorov and then fed it over to the space occupied by Lettinen. 2-2. Lettinen's fourth of the season, his first shorthanded tally, first by any Dallas star this year. 22 seconds in, Madonna and Matvachuk get the helpers. And then the Stars had more chances on the power play. Yeah, plenty of chances. Uh, off a of face-off win, Daryl Sador at the left point brought it to the net. And right in front of the net, Yuri Lettinen tips one right off the pumpkin of Chris Osgood. So he used his head on that one. And then again, it, this time it wasn't Osgood, but a little later on, Langebrunner got a pass from behind the net off the stick of Neuendijk, and he cranked a one-timer towards the goal, and that one hit Maltby in the head. So the pumpkins have been shining in that second period. How about the numbers through two? Well, shots on goal, 23-14 Dallas right now. The, the two high shooters on both sides are two guys you'd expect it. Shanahan has five of the 14 shots for Detroit. Hall has five of the 23 for Dallas. The penalty killing has been excellent. Oh, one for six for Detroit. Oh, for six for Dallas so far in the hockey game. And that might be where this thing is decided in the third period. Scoring chances close to a two to one advantage for Dallas in that category, 13 to eight. Osgood's been very good. Belfour was very steady in that second period. Although, as we mentioned, the fans here tonight have seen even play at special teams because the Stars have a shorthanded goal and the Wings have a power play goal. The game is tied at two. And the third period begins. Madonna, Hall, and Lettman. Ludwig and Chambers. Larianoff, Shanahan, and LaPointe. Up front, McCown and Dandino, the defenseman for the Detroit Red Wings. Neither team has a player in the penalty box that affects the manpower advantage on the ice. There is, however, some spillover from the second period to still serve. Ludwig out of his own zone to Hall. He'll swat it out. Lidstrom in pursuit. They wave the icing. He'll pick it up. Toss it around behind his net to Larry Murphy, who gave it away nearly to Lettinen. Lidstrom came in to help him out. Madonna hunting it down along the far boards, but the Wings come up with it. LaPointe staring it ahead to Shanahan. 
Goes back to LaPointe, but floated it up into the Dallas bench and thus out of play. Well, I would suspect that Ken Hitchcock liked what he saw in the second period and probably harped at his club to keep doing the same things. They, they were a nasty, difficult to play against hockey club in the second period, and that's what he wanted out of his team. Scotty Bowman, I, I'm sure, will play only the players that he suspects are going well tonight, and that, that might be different groups. It might be everybody. But, but he goes with the horses night in and night out. He, he doesn't just play everybody. If you're going well, you're going to play, and you'll play a lot, especially in a game like this. Stars bring it ahead. Reed to center ice. He got it in around Dandeno. McCown back to pick it up, and it's apparently icing against the Dallas Stars. Well, if they're going to do anything, if, if the Red Wings are going to break back into their game again, they'll do it in, in those 10-foot increments when they bring it up the ice. And that, that's what Dallas is completely shut down. Whenever the, the Wings go for anything now, it's about a 50-foot pass, and they're just they're just passing and hoping. Otherwise, it's you know it's a little chip here, and then a turnover, and then a chip there, and a turnover. Chip and go. That's Dallas's game, and not so much the the Red Wings game. There's a, their game is more a, a puck possession game. They love to have it on their stick, and then make the other team make mistakes, and then they just take advantage of those mistakes. Petteroff wins the draw out of Brown. He shot off Zuboff and wide. Sador will clear it up the near boards. Keen will help it out. Dandino, leg after it, using his speed, he'll get back and get it. Left it away from Keen, left it for McCown, who comes perilously out in front of his own goal. And nudge it ahead, and Dandino will float one to Federoff. He makes the turn at center as he's watched by Guy Carbono. Give it to McCown, but the Stars forced him to retreat. Dandino floating it across. Kozlov now has to come back and help out. Wings having trouble moving it ahead cleanly. Fedorov crosses the stripe. He'll toss it in. Brown was in pursuit, but Sador got there first. Using the boards, he got it out. See, they've had to break into that chip-and-go game, too, because you just can't make three passes in a row out here right now. It's, it's a difficult thing to do. Fedorov all locked up. Langenbrunner forcing him back. Marshall waiting along the near boards, and the puck floated out to the Dallas line. Matt Pachuk has it there. Watched by McCarty. He gives it to Neuendijk, who makes the turn, hands it to Hatcher. Now to Langenbrunner. Here he comes. He's got some room. A shot. Save Osgood. Goes down to both knees. The C parted for him. He took advantage of it and ripped one low, but Osgood made the stop. Well, they, they caught the Red Wings on almost a half change. One of the forwards, I think it might have been Iserman, who was heading off and then realized that the puck had been turned over, and, and then right away they had to go back and transition again. So as they were as they were working their way off the ice, all of a sudden it opened up, and then they get chasing back towards their net. Lidstrom played off Lang in front of her a little bit and allowed his goaltender to see the shot, and he stopped it. And as I mentioned last night, I think he needs to do that more, what he just did. Langenbrunner, shoot. Face off in the Red Wing zone. Neuendijk, Langenbrunner, and Marshall up front for the Stars. Matt Pachuk and Hatcher, the point. Neuendijk wins the draw away from Iserman to Matt Pachuk. His shot in the high slot is blocked down. The man who blocked it, McCarty, hands it off to Shanahan. The Red Wings attack. They'll throw it in. Belfour is out of his goal. They'll whip it up the far side. Held in at the right point. Ward, a shot kicked out by Belfour. It's loose and shot over the top of the goal by Shanahan. A delayed penalty now whistled down against the Dallas Stars. McCarty was dumped in front of the Dallas goal. And the Wings are going on the power play for the seventh time. It's been a big night for Bobby De Niro's out here on both sides. If you go down and, and if you're going to get, if you have any chance whatsoever of giving your team an advantage, then you really sell it. And I'm not saying McCarty didn't get knocked down, but I don't think he got knocked down that hard. In front of the net, he caught, I think he might have caught the stick of Belfour, even, as he did a little goalie log roll in the crease and then dove across. Pretty good save, pretty good second effort by Belfour. And McCarty went went down and they give him a double minor. They get. That's, that's really that's a really bad call and, and now they're up in the I mean the guy was falling down and, and I think that was when he got cut was just when he was falling down it wasn't a high stick right in front of the net the puck came through from the from the right side and then in front of the net as as McCarty tried to tried to get around and get a stick on it he must have got clipped by a stick, the stick of Hatcher as he swung around. I couldn't even see it as we took another look at it. He's cut though on the on the Red Wing bench. Four-minute power play for the Wings. 
Power plays seven and eight for Detroit. And now a whistle stops play. They called it uh, one for hooking and one for high sticking. So that's why the double minor. So it's not a double minor for just high sticking. At least that's the, the report that we got up here. So two for hooking and two for high sticking. And the penalty killing is going to have to be brilliant here again. And your best penalty killer, of course, is the guy back. And the eagle right now is flapping his wings back there as he gets ready for this power play. Madonna, Lennon, Ludwig, and Zuba on with Belfort. Shot off the draw, knocked down by Belfour. It's clear to Lidstrom at the point, to Murphy at the right. Watched by Madonna, he gives it back to Lidstrom. Challenge, they go down low with it to Iserman. Moving in for a shot. Belfour had the post covered. And Iserman trying to dig it out of the referee skates. On the near boards, he'll walk it down again. Shot right on, save Belfour, and it's clear. Iserman just loves that. He, he loves to get down on the left wing side. And, and he's a right-hand shot, and then he goes short side up top on butterfly goaltenders. As they go down, he goes upstairs. Shanahan got it into Lidstrom. Not a Murphy, a drive, and it went wide of the goal. Chambers tying up with Iserman. Sidor will get to it. Overskated the puck. Had a chance to clear, but wanted to drag it out. Iserman will pick it up. Furious battle in front of the Dallas goal. Iserman teeing it up, diving to knock it off of his stick with Sidor. Holmstrom will send it around. Shanahan in the near corner to Iserman. He's challenged, works the puck down low. They put it into the slot. Lindstrom trying to tee it up to Shanahan. Oh. Belfour got across and shut the pad out. Does work hard along the near boards, but can't clear. Iserman, a drive. Belfour, the save. And a furious battle in front of the Dallas net. Anarchy. I think Belfour has a grip on, or he did for a second, the gentleman from Sweden as he dubbed him in the playoffs last year Thomas Sun uh, Thomas Holmstrom pardon me what a save by Belfort you could just see it you could see it being set up when Lidstrom with his patience and, and Lidstrom for them has the same patience that Zubov does for the stars on their power play they don't panic they wait that extra couple of heartbeats and then they make a play and Shanahan had it right in his wheelhouse and uncorked it as quick as he could and Belfour with tremendous rapidity moved from left to right a little fake and then the setup and bam from the top of the circle and Belfour just slid across stacked the pads and spit it aside great save by Eddie Belfour that save coupled with I think three solid saves off of Iserman and, and he's killing the penalty by himself right now and Belfour last season against Detroit. One win, one loss, and two ties in the regular season. A 2.24 goals against average in the playoffs. He was 2-4, and four, of course, in the six-game loss. Six shots on this power play so far for, for the Red Wings. So they're getting the licks that they want. Better off up now with Kozlov and LaPointe. Brown and Erickson, the defenseman. Madonna wins the draw. Zuboff going to hustle it down, and he'll pitch it out. Good depth work with the stick by Zubov. He had Fedorov chasing him down from behind. He had to hustle to get there and then elevate it. That's a tough play. 2.22 left in the double minor to Hatcher. Zubov stepping up at center to break up the play. Lettman trying to swat it forward. Madonna was lurking like a shark at the Detroit line, but they never got him the puck. Here's Brown. The Kozlov makes the turn to Fedorov at center. Flips it to Kozlov. He's in across the line. Shadowed by Zuboff, he'll dump it down the boards. Now Zuboff and Brown going hard in the right wing corner. Kozlov rescuing the puck. Zuboff out to cover him. Lettman picking off a pass off his stick, and he'll send it down the ice. Boy, if you're coaching the league and you want to you want to teach penalty killing, you take a tape of this game. Either side, you, you pick either side you want. It's been textbook. 140 left in the double minor to Hatcher. The wings now one for seven on the power play. This is number eight. They scored on their second advantage of the game. Now the Stars pick it up, and here they come, shorthand in a three-on-one. Chambers leading the charge, moving in for a shot. Save Osgood, rebound. Osgood knocks it down as well. And the Detroit net is pushed back. Oh, my goodness, what action at Reunion Arena. Well, I can understand half of it, and I don't understand half of that break by Dallas. They're killing a penalty, so you don't want everyone to just bust towards the net and then open yourself up 
for the Red Wings to go the other direction. Murphy, number 55, got caught pinching in, a defenseman. And as they came over the blue line, nobody, nobody went towards the net. And Chambers brings it in towards it. He did the intelligent thing to bring it to the front of the net. And then Scrudlin couldn't get the rebound and chip it over top of Osgood, who just laid there. The, the rebound came out just outside the crease, and then Scrudlin came in and couldn't mop things up. Wow. Unbelievable game. 2-2, 15-04 to play in the third. 121 left in the second minor penalty to Hatcher. I guess it's high sticking. You got one for hooking in, high sticking on the same play. Face up in the Detroit zone. Carbono and Sador up front. Zuboff and Ludwig, the penalty killers for the Dallas Stars. Lidstrom and Murphy, the point men. Lariana, McCarty, and Holmstrom up front. Wings move it in. The right wing corner, they rescue the puck. Murphy back out to Lidstrom, top of the left circle. Firing, blocked by Sador. Now forced back by Sador at the left point. He gives it to McCarty, over to Murphy, top of the right circle, stepping down toward the goal, moving around behind the net, unchallenged. He'll send it back out to Lidstrom at the left point. Pumps a shot, got Sador to commit and go down. Darrell's back up, the puck goes to Murphy. Now to Lidstrom at the left point. His shot blocked by Sador. Carbono can't clear. Zuboff in pursuit. He'll find it along the far board. Sador directing him to clear it. And he's a good follower of instructions. Boy, that Holmstrom took a beating in front of the net. You go to the front of the net, you're going to pay a price. And Ludwig just tattooed him on the back about 10 times. 20 seconds left in the power play. Madonna with a steal. He'll send the wings chasing once more. Lidstrom to try it again. Up the near boards. Chambers picked it off. Madonna attacking shorthanded. He's in with Lettman, but it's two on four. Madonna creating more space. But he loses the handle, and Lidstrom will pick it up. But great penalty killing work by the Stars. They got them both. And everybody up here at Reunion Arena. Madonna stealing it again, starting the attack into Langenbrunner into the slot. His shot is blocked. Gandano will pick it up, and he'll start the Red Wing attack back to center. Left wing at the Dallas line. He cuts to his right, and the wings are offside. 13-18 to play in the third. 2-2 the score. Don't go anywhere on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. The destination of your dreams when the Stars take on the San Jose Sharks, November 23rd at Reunion Arena. Call 214 Go Stars for more information. Razor on that first minor against Hatcher. They had six shots on the second. They did not get a shot away. Now they're in on the attack. Maltby trying to find it off the Belfer's left. It's cleared to the near boards in the Dallas zone. Holmstrom ripping it. That's blocked by Chambers. Holmstrom will try it again. They'll go around behind the goal. Draper centering. Maltby's in front. Can't get to the puck. And here come the Stars the other way. Neuendijk at center ice. They'll back end it across the line. Oh, do these two teams back yet? They, they, they just hunt you down in the neutral zone. Neuendijk went in to throw a hit on Holmstrom, but the wings cleared it. Chambers from center. Off Langenbrunner. Not across the line yet. It bounces at center. Into Chambers. He'll hand it off to Neuendijk. Stars will dump it in, and both teams will change. The linesman took a high stick. Andy McKelman took one in his shoulder down there. In that type of game. Yes, it has. Wings are in. Onside, apparently. McCarty forced to the near boards by Matt Pachuk. Gives it to Ward. A drive. Pad save. Belfour. Matt Pachuk will whip it to the far side. Erickson will keep it in. To Ward again for a blast. Off Hatcher and into the seats. 12.09 left in the third period. 2-2 the score on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. American Airlines now flies for... Wings and the Dallas Stars and the Eddie Belfour's fan club is in attendance. Either that or a couple of the greats in the game. Jerry Cheevers <laughs> on the right. And I believe it's, you, you thought it might have been an old, an old star in that final. Yeah. It might be Tony Esposito. I thought maybe too. it was Tony. Oh, he might be here because he's not too busy right now. The guy with the real eagle mask has been brilliant. He killed off the first power play, if you look at it. Six shots on that. And then the guys in front of him killed off the second one. He looks at a face-off in the circle to his left that hits Guy Carbonell of the Stars against Steve Eiserman of the Detroit Red Wings. Carbonell locks up his man and allows Matt Pachuk to get to the puck and send it up the boards and out to center ice. 
12 minutes remaining in the third period. 2-2 the score. The Wings jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first. Brett Hall scored late in the first to make it 2-1. With Detroit on a power play early in the second, Yere Lettman took a beautiful pass from Mike Madonna to even it, and that's where we are. Dave Reed hit as the Stars attempt to attack, and Eiserman will start Detroit's. Folly the other way. At center, he'll lift it in. Left wing corner. Hatcher going after the puck. Right wing side, Shanahan pushed by Hatcher. There's Carbonell tied up. Matt Pichuk. Ian Shanahan bang in the right wing corner in the Dallas zone. Carbono in, he'll hit McCarty. Members of both teams wrestle for the puck. Stars have it. Hatcher will pick it up. And Darian will use the glass and get it out. Fortuitously right to Carbono. Jammed in the middle of the ice. Carbono turns and back ends it in. You know the glass in the building, I guess. <laughs> it ends up being a direct pass into the high slot. Lidstrom with some jump, brought it ahead to center and plays it in deep into the Dallas zone. Sador hit by Fedorov. Lettman leaves it for Madano. Here come the Stars. Pass right to Hall. From center ice, he'll toss it. Left wing corner. Madano and Murphy going hard after the puck. Madano easing up on Murphy. Murphy going down, swatted it behind his goal, and it's cleared up into the seats. And out of play, and the faceoff will stay in the Detroit Red Wing zone. Well, that line's looked as good as I've seen it. The, the guy on the right side of the Madonna, Hall, and Lettinen trio is, is consistent. He's been great every night, and that's your Lettinen. The other two guys have been a little inconsistent in their, in their play, and Hall's had a tough adjustment to, to things here. But he's no different than a lot of the other free agents that have signed here. Remember, Ed Belfer had to go through an adjustment period to get used to the defense here and how he wants to play, and... Pat Verbeek had an adjustment. Sean Chambers had an adjustment when they signed here, so maybe it's just a phase. Well, he's got one tonight. Here's Sador with a shot. Save. Hall the rebound. He almost had two, and Osgood blocked it. Sador challenging along the left wing boards, but the wings come up with the puck. Kozlov will flip it high. Lots of lobs here, Razor, in the third period. Chip and go. Kozlov holding the zone. Brown waiting. But Sador muscled him off the puck, and Hall will carry it forward. Left wing at center. Madano following the play. Hall tossing it at the goal, and Osgood makes the save and hangs onto it. Both of these goaltenders have absolutely sparkled in this game. This has not been an easy goaltender's game. Easy goaltender's games are when you see everything and nothing gets deflected. Well, everything's getting deflected. There have been some second chances. Hall came in on a rebound chance a few minutes ago, but really didn't get much in the way of lumber on it. Osgood had to deal with a deflection that time and some traffic in front of the net. His numbers against the Stars all time are stunning. And if you include playoffs now, and you have to do that after last year, 25 career games against them, regular season and playoffs, 17 wins, four losses, and three ties. That's close to domination. Yes, it is. Face off to the left of his goal. Brian Strudland worked the draw for the Stars. It's one of the all-time greats, Igor Larionov, the Detroit Red Wings. Wings control. Dan Deneau around behind his goal. The point trying to clear. Turnover. Kesmer chopping with McCown along the far boards. The battle level here has just been intense. And an offside call at the line. And McCown, or... One of the Red Wings, it's LaPointe, I guess, going over to talk to Dan Kesmer. Yeah, Kesmer. Every time Kesmer's come on the ice, he's, I think he's given Ken Hitchcock and the Stars the, the shifts that they want out of him. He doesn't back down. And, you know, for Dan Kesmer to get into that series last year after being out for a month and play the way he did, is, is nothing short of amazing. He had a lot of guys mad at him on this last shift, and that's what, that's what you want to do. You want to play in their face, he continues to jaw with LaPointe along the far side. LaPointe's as thick as he is wide. Now the wings in their own zone. Larianoff tossing it back. Ward scampering forward. Pass ahead. Here comes Detroit on the attack. Eisenman carrying it around behind the goal. Trying to wrap around. He's cut down and a penalty coming up here against Sean Chambers. Tripping the call. Power play number nine on the way for Detroit, and Sean Chambers is living. Well, Iserman kept his feet moving in behind the net and just, just kept pedaling, and Chambers had to try to chase him down. He had one hand on his stick, and down went, and it's been the story all night from both sides. If you get touched, fall down, because that's the way the game's being played. 
and you'll get a power play and you'll get a better chance to get your offense going and and to maybe score what might be and I would say with uh, under 10 minutes to go now and in, in this tight a hockey game the winning goal these two teams have played against one another a lot the last two seasons and in, entering into the game here tonight one goal separated them in overall offense between the two teams that is amazing and balance too, Razor. Last year in the regular season series, in the five games, 24 combined goals scored by 20 different players. Face off in the Dallas zone, controlled by Detroit. They're on the power play for the ninth time. They're one for eight in a 2-2 game. With nine and a half to play in the third period, they throw it toward the goal. Hatcher blocks it, picks an opening between Lidstrom and Murphy, and clears. You just have to think that if they're going to score, it's going to go through number five on their point somehow, and maybe touch number 14, Shanahan. Holmstrom now, 96. Oh, he's rubbed out at the Dallas line by Hatcher, but gets the puck in deep. Murphy, across to Lidstrom, left circle. Coming out the challenge and make the play read. And he'll push it ahead on the attack. Lidstrom has a grip on him. The Stars are in, short-handed. Carbon Pester in Shanahan. And the Wings will have to regroup. And there's more of that. That's what both sides have done. Uh, the Wings have done that to Zubov, and the Stars have given no time and space to Lidstrom. Belfour playing it into the far corner in his own zone. Stars in the wings battle for it. Ludwig pinning Fedorov. Madonna up with the puck. He'll clear it all the way down right to Osgood. 55 remaining on Chambers' minor penalty. The Stars have yet to enjoy a power play in the third period. This is the third crack at it for the wings. They had two successive earlier. Round from center. Slams it in. Lines up behind Belfour's goal. Zuboff will rip it up and out. And Lutton will catch up to it. Two on two, shorthanded with Madonna. Lettman cutting toward the goal. Now they chase him down and relieve him of the puck. Half a minute remaining on the power play. Erickson from center. Long range, testing Belfort. He knocked it out. Draper on the follow-up and went off Matt the Chuck and wide. Keen whipping it, but not out. Erickson across. High slot, Brown. Laying it to the far boards. The wing setting up with the point out front of the goal. They fire it. It's blocked again. Stars dive after it, and they're able to bring it out. Here's Keane and Strudlin shorthanded at the Red Wing line. Keane will pull up. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Chambers is on, and they kill it off again. Draper will come to the strike, play it in, and Belfour will toss it off for Hatcher. He'll whip it up the far boards, and a drive as the wing stole it is sent up over the top of the net. Ludwig trying to rip it up the near boards. He got it ahead. Marshall took a hit, but made the play to Lang and Butter, and he and Newendike attack. Newendike attack. What a save by Osgood. Larsonis with that left pass. Stars rip it right back in. Newendike charging after it along the near board. And it's picked up by McCown. Now Marshall throws a hit. Newendike centering blindly in the passes block. Marshall leaving it for Newendike. This line continuing to work against the wing. McCown getting to the puck. And the wings are able finally to clear. Dandino striding to center ice. Lang and Brunner cut him down. Zuboff picks it up. Slides it across for Sadar. Stars advancing the attack. Lettman falling, they don't get the call. And the wings will clear, no icing here. 6.35 to play in the third. 2-2 the score, here comes Lettman on a feed from Madonna. He'll roll it in and Osgood will give it to Murphy. Hall chasing him to and his goal. Lidstrom picking it up. Watch by Hall, he gives it to Murphy. Madonna and Lettman pursuing, but Murphy will bring it to center and he'll toss it into the Dallas zone. Eiserman giving chase. Matt Kachuk has a measure and he hits him behind the goal. And whips the puck up the near boards. Lettman trying to push it out past Lidstrom. Zuboff in to help out. Here come the Stars the other way. Zuboff at center ice, picking his way to the Detroit line. Into the middle of the ice for Madonna. Blind feed to Hall! He scores! that Murphy seemed to have eyes in the back of his head. It was the same thing. And Murphy was the only defenseman back. McDonald threw just a blind pass across. Hull was all alone. And there's no way Chris Osgood catches up to that one-timer. Perfectly placed, low to the stick, hand side, and it was humming. Brett Hall 
picks up his third of the season, second of the night. And the Stars have a one-goal lead with under six minutes remaining in the game. Mike Madonna picking up his second assist of the evening. And the Red Wings try and regroup. In the Detroit zone, Kozlov trying to push it out. Steal for Beek. Slap shot blocked away by Osgood. Marty LaPointe bringing it ahead to center. Trying to pass across the ice and hit Carbono's skate. Better off, will twirl with it. Hand it off, LaPointe will bring it in. Ran into Zuboff along the left wing boards in the corner. Carbono trying to clear. He's jammed. Ward has it. Kozlov to LaPointe. Watched by Zuboff. They dive to the wings to try and keep a play alive, but it gets pushed back into the Detroit zone. Five minutes left in the third. Turnover at neutral ice. Kesmer will whip it in. Osgood makes the stop. Lays it up the far side. And Kesmer right back in the action, but the wings deal it in. Right to Matvichuk. Up the boards. Scrudland in front of his own bench, tied up by Draper. McCarty and Kesmer with a piece of each other. Members of both teams joust, and the whistle stops play. 3-2 stars, 4.40 to play in the third on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. Burger joint. 40 to go in regulation. The Stars have fought back from a 2-0 deficit, and they've been buoyed by Brett Hall. A pair of goals for Hall tonight. A wicked Howard, sir, on the one-timer to put them ahead. Now they have to protect the lead. It is the first time, really, as now a whistle stops play and perhaps penalties to each side. It's, it's Dan Kesmer in the middle of things again for the Stars. Darren McCarty, too, and Chris Draper. What I started to say, Razor, it's the first time I've seen Hall get clear for loading up that big gun. I mean, on any consistent basis, and we've seen it, and it has happened, and he has scored. Well, that last goal is, that is Brett Hall. If you, if you wanted to capture a snapshot of, of Brett Hall in this league, that would be it. Him standing off to the left-hand side of a goal at the top of the circle, trying to pierce the, the clouds with his stick, and somebody setting up a one-timer, and no goalie in the world catching up to it. As long as he hits the net, and he hit the net, and he, he hit a fine line on the short side. He's been good. The, uh, the problem before we went to break is Sidor got hit right by the Stars bench by LaPointe, and, and there was an uproar there, and then there's more nastiness after every, after every face-off and every whistle, so McCarty and Kesmer go off this time. They get sent to the room. Four on four hockey. It opens up the rink a little bit. Zuboff, Sador, Letman, and Madano for the Stars. Kozla, or Brown in, rather. With Fedorov, Lidstrom, and Murphy. A lot of skill on the ice. Zuboff lost the handle at the Red Wing line. Madano fighting a hooking call coming up against Detroit. Dallas will go on the power play, leading 3-2 late in the game on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. So, you thought you knew everything about the Sicilian, huh? Well, I got news for you. Now it's in a whole nother league. This is the Supreme Sicilian. This is Ken Griffey giving a baseball a facial. This is a 300-pound gator turning you into a wallet. This is enough basil, oregano, and garlic in the crust to drop your carcass. Dallas Stars lead this game 3-2, to two, and Razor, they're about to go on the power play. And the guy wearing 22 in green will be looking for the the third of the night. The, the hat trick. It'd be his first as a Dallas star, but he has plenty of them in his career. They would just, I think, like to have a buffer and use their power play. So far, it's the goose egg for the night for them, and it's been a long time since it's been shut down. Puck drifts to center ice. Zuboff will pick it up. It's a four-on-three advantage for Dallas. It will be that way for most of this power play. Zuboff will bring it ahead. Dick handling at the line, tossing it to Madano, top of the circle, to Sador. Not a Zuboff high slot. They set it up. They give him room. Madano parked out front. He's paying a price for being there. Sador will move it in. Back out to Zuboff. Trying to load up. Gives it to Sador, and he one-timed it wide. Hull, oh, back out to Zuboff on top. He'll fire it. Tipped wide by Madano, who rescues the puck. Stick handles in the corner, back out to Zuboff. Had to lurch to keep it in, Sador will pick it up. Top of the right circle, now to Madano. The hole, a shot! It knocked Osgood over. He didn't see it, it just knocked him right over. Zuboff from the high slot. 
He'll set it up again to Hall. Fakes it. Gives it back to Zuboff. Top of the circle. Stars moving the puck at will against the Red Wings. Sador off to the side of the goal. The Hall. He one-timed it but fanned on it. Madonna can't reach Zuboff with the puck. Lidstrom finds it and clears. That's twice they tried that with Hall because... Uh, the Red Wings were in a very passive little triangle, and Hall kept moving over to the near side and set up for that one-timer twice. 20 seconds left on the coincidental minor penalties. 35 remaining in the power play for Dallas, and Chris Osgood wants a whistle and a face-off in his own end. They, they were very passive, surprisingly passive, especially on Hall on the far side who had it loaded up. Zubov wanted, he demanded the puck in the middle and they gave it to him. And then they just waited for Hall to move around in position and, and he and Sidor just sort of swapped sides. And then Ben, that's as passive as you'll see penalty killing out of Detroit. And it's easy to stand in front of the net on that too because it's Lidstrom and Murphy out there and neither of those two guys are going to really punish you when you stand in front of the net. They're more positioned than punished. Face off in the Red Wings zone, controlled by the Stars, but an errant pass winds up at center ice. McCown for the Wings, going back into his own end. They got to move it forward here, now they do. All the way down the ice it goes. The minor penalties are over, Kesmer and McCarty come on. 14 seconds left in the one to Brown. Stars lead it, three to two, two and a half to play in the third. Langenbrunner tried to attack, it was poked off of his stick. Dallas hustling back after it in their own zone. Fedorov nearly stole it. Chambers coming in to help out. Can't be cute now. You get at the offensive blue line. It has to go in and it has to go deep. Stars play it in. Newendike after it. The penalty is over. Stars in on the attack. Newendike wrapping around. Cutting to the slot. Playing it back out to Sador off the boards. A drive. That one hit something in front and went wide. Zuba pounding it at the goal. Off Osgood. For big kicking at it. And Shanahan will touch it off to Fedorov. Screaming at Belfort to stay down there, and that he should. Osgood's out of his mind right now. He's a feisty little guy, Chris Osgood is. He's a competitor, as was the guy he was tied up with. There are not a lot of. Uh, now Shanahan. Shanahan wants for Peak. And Don Van Massenhoven, the referee, and Mark Perry, the linesman. One of them has one of those two. Well, well, this all started because Osgood had a grip on Verbeek's stick. And you can you can call holding the stick on a goalie too. And Van Massenhoven didn't. Verbeek got tied up first by Lindstrom and then he tried to Maradona had passed the goalie and then he, he couldn't get his stick out. So then they grabbed one and then Osgood came out again and got in his face. Osgood laid a beating on on Patrick Waugh of uh, Colorado last year. But my money would be on Pat Verbeek in that one. Goalies rarely win the fights with players. However, they should leave the gear on should they decide to engage. The gear's a lot smaller this year. And he, you know, he was one of the guys that, that everyone pointed to as far as, as using a, a parachute for a sweater. And it was a big sweater, big, big jersey last year. And they've, they've regulated against that. And he actually says, I, I feel quicker now that they've regulated against the equipment. And his goals against average would show that. Brendan Shanahan is in the penalty box. So is Pat Verbeek. 153 remains in this game. And it has been everything and then some that we expected out of this hockey game. I mean, in some respects, Razor, I can't believe what a game we've had tonight. It's been a Dallas game. It's been the Stars game. It's been the game they wanted more so. Although, you know, when you're the Stanley Cup champions back-to-back -back like Detroit is, you can pretty much play whatever game's on the ice. But they would much prefer to play a more free-flowing game and, and less of this type of game. And they had no choice tonight because Dallas just sort of drug them into this thing. Shanahan's been ushered off to the dressing room. There's under two minutes remaining in regulation. There's a two-minute minor up on the scoreboard to Shanahan. There are going to be more penalties than just that, though. 
Shanahan is off the ice. This is the third game in four nights on the road for the Detroit Red Wings. I was talking to Larry Murphy downstairs, and I said, how are you holding up? He said, well, I'm okay, but I'm a little worried about the older guys. <laughs> Plenty of veterans on both sides of this one tonight. While they sort this thing out, we'll, we'll revisit the edge a yeah. little bit here and see what went on tonight. Well, special teams has been close to a wash. The Wings, they, they have a, a power play goal, but the Stars have a shorthanded goal, and the penalty killing on both sides has been tremendous. Team speed has been negated by feistiness, so that was an advantage for the Red Wings, and, and it really hasn't been an advantage tonight. You haven't seen Fedorov, and you haven't seen the players who can really scoot Kozlov have a bite into this game. The even-strength offense, well, the go-ahead goal right now, the game winner, if it stands up, is a, an even-strength goal by Hall, and, and you kind of thought that was going to be an advantage for the Red Wings, and it hasn't been in this one. And then grit and grinding, that, that's what the game has been. It's been punctuated by grit and grinding, and that was a push, and it's they both got their licks in out there tonight and played hard. This is the eighth power play of the game for the Stars, so the Wings, with 1.53 left, and they trail by a goal, will play the remainder of this game shorthanded, or the Stars will take a two-goal lead, barring any future calls. Zuboff at center ice. Tossing it back. Dallas will be very careful here. They're trying to protect that one-goal lead. I'll tell you what, though, it's difficult to do that. It really is. Now Lettman back of the goal. Lidstrom's lost his stick. Madonna to Zuboff. A shot! Tipped by Lettman off Osgood and into the seat. The best thing you can do is just score a goal and then give yourself a buffer because the, the more you sit back, and this would happen last night, but if you try to protect what's going on, Sometimes you don't do the natural thing and you put pucks into positions you wouldn't normally do and it gives the, the penalty killers in this situation a chance to spring on it and go. They realize they have to score here shorthanded in order to take this thing to overtime. So if they have any kind of an inkling, any kind of a sniff, they'll go for it. Face off to Osgood's right. Madonna, Lettinen, and Hall. Zuboff and Sador, the point men. Iserman to work it against Madonna. Wings win the draw. Murphy behind his goal. He'll clear it. They had Larry on off and Eiserman heading up the middle, but Madonna made a steal. He'll whip it right back in. Off the boards. Osgood getting there. Lettinen working with it along the near side. Crossing it in the direction of behind the goal. Where Lidstrom found it. He'll clear it ahead. And the Wings sending players. Here's Eiserman in on the attack. Slap shot. Zuboff got out of the way. Belfour made the save. Yes. Yeah, as soon as they fought, fought. They were going to get possession in their own zone. Iserman and Larry Onoff took, took off like a couple of wideouts, and then they just lobbed it out over the middle, and Osgood came sprinting out of the net. And a little give and go between Larry Onoff and Iserman after the fact, and then the shot from the wing at the top of the circle, and Belfort took it right in the belly and then hung on to it. So now it comes down to a face-off, and it'll be essentially even strength out there because the wings are going to go with the extra attacker. They were down a man. So now they'll they'll play five on five, and it all comes down really here to this faceoff. Because if the Stars gain control and can get over center ice, it's an empty net down at the other end. 102 left in the third period. 108 on the time to the Shanahan minor. 3-2 Dallas face off the Belfer's right. Carboneau and Larry on off tie up. Stars with a steal. Keen can't get it out. Carboneau does to Reed at center. He'll just use the boards and tap it across the line. Good smart play. They learned a little something from last night. Wings charging ahead with it. Eiserman in. Make the shot. Matt Pachuk went down. Stars go crashing into the end boards. And somebody went in pretty hard under the pile. It was Guy Carbono. And he's okay. I ran, believe. Ran his head into the boards. And I think Big Dave Reed's knee or body went in there as well. And Carbono's feeling a little wonky. Yeah. You know, again, it, that's the type of player that you win these games on, and it's the type of player who you, you get the offense from from Hall and players like that. But you know, Pete Carbonell's play, penalty killing, and and leadership, he just went hard into the boards with his head. Ow! So he's got a little cut over his eye after that thing, so he'll go off. Good face-off guy that, that may not be available now for a defensive a defensive face-off here. All this coming with about 41 seconds remaining in regulation. Third sellout in a row, fourth of the season, and nearly every
everybody is still here. What a hockey game it's been. The Stars have a one goal lead with 40 seconds remaining and a lot different feel in so many ways from the game last night. Oh, yeah. Well, this one, you answered questions that, that you, you asked before the game now. And, you know, Zubov and Sador against Lidstrom and Murphy. And Murphy was on for the last goal, and they got discombobulated in their own zone. And the one-timer by Hall. Are the Stars deep enough to match the four lines of, of the Red Wings? I think they've proven that they are tonight. Although a lot of this game has been on special teams, we haven't seen, you know, lines roll over one after the other after the other. And can Hall and Neuendijk make the difference? who were not here when they played in the playoffs last year. Well, Hall's made a pretty good impression in this one here tonight. Neuendijk has played hard, but the guy's coming back from double knee surgery, and you can see him fade as games go, as games go a little deeper in. Later in games, he just doesn't have the energy level. Without Carboneau, Madonna is out there, and he is the only center iceman for the Stars. Hall, Lettinen, Hatcher, and Matvichuk. Eiserman kicking at it. They win the draw. Back to the right point to Murphy. To Lidstrom. He's sneaking down. They center it. Went off Madonna. He'll play it off the boards. And down the ice it goes. Icing coming up here. Letting it in a foot race with Eiserman. And the Red Wing captain outlegs him. 24 and 8 10 seconds remaining. And the Red Wings, I think, want another second and a half put on the clock. They will lobby and try and get it. And, and a penalty has been called for lobbying too much. He's going to go for chick chatting a little too much with the guys in stripes. Madonna has gotten back to, to what he has. He's created an identity for himself the last two seasons here, and that's a great two-way player. Creative, explosive offensively, very studious and hardworking defensively. He takes that draw out there. They don't win it clean. The play comes rotating around to the near side, and who's down near the goal to break it up with Mike McDonald to get around the boards and down the ice? He's had a heck of a game tonight. 26 and 2 10 seconds remaining now as they have adjusted it. The penalty to Murphy, maybe of the 10 minute misconduct yeah, I, variety, I should think, and will not affect the manpower advantage on the ice. And a faceoff stays in the Dallas zone on the icing call. You joined us late. It was 2 0 early. For the guys in white, tonight the guys in white are the road team, the Red Wings, and then the Stars kind of got their act together, got their game back in front of them, got nasty, and since then, you know, they've taken it to the Wings in a lot of areas. 26 and 2 10 seconds remaining in this one. 3 2 Dallas face off to Belfer's right. Eiserman against Madonna. The Wings win the draw. Better off to Lidstrom at the left point. Challenged by Lettman. He puts it around behind. Holmstrom trying to center. Madonna finds it. He can't clear. Lidstrom a shot. He hit the post. Eiserman going after it. Hatcher has it along the near boards. 10 seconds left in the game. They scrap. They claw. The Stars trying to push it out up the near boards. And finally, a whistle stops play, but... Now, the ref is holding, and there's going to be time left on, I think. Yes, there will be. About three and a half seconds, I should think. Yeah, he was holding the bench, and the players were going to pour on the ice. Well, Madonna made, I'm sure, what is going to be called by, by Ken Hitchcock a casual play, and you can't make casual plays when you're when you're playing against greatness on the other side. And, and he, he thought he had a gaping gap in the middle of the ice to get it out, and instead of being able to get it out, it gets knocked down, and then they fire it back towards the net. He just never got anything on it. Lidstrom grabbed it at the blue line. It was an easy keep in, and then his snapshot rose quickly, traffic in front, and Katink off the post on the shorthand side, and then dribbled back underneath of Eddie Belfour and stayed out. Went off his pad and out, and then Hatcher blocked people out and went behind the net. They have two and three ten seconds put on the board here. Referee Don Van Massenhoven is on the telephone, and he is checking with replay to find out exactly how much time perhaps should be on that clock. Well, formality now, I think, where the faceoff is going to be, and with that little time left, they, they can't score. Detroit, I don't think, can score in that time. And, you know, Dallas and Detroit and Philadelphia came into this game tonight tied with the most points in the National Hockey League. Philly was losing 3 nothing last time I looked, and then they second lost. period, they lost. There you go. It's a final! Lost. I believe they lost. They I lost. But Detroit looks like they're going to lose this one, and Dallas should be first overall in the National Hockey League, and 
in one 60-minute game. If they ever figure out how much time's left. Hey, people want to go trick-or-treating. Uh, the New York Islanders defeated the Philadelphia Flyers tonight, three to two. That's the final, and so the first month of the season is two and three seconds, three tenths seconds away from ending with the Dallas Stars as they were at the end of the regular season, once more on top of the pile. And they have come out in this game tonight and backed up the challenge that they have said so often with words. Detroit, we're after what you got. Well, they'll bring everybody over the blue line here, so both their defensemen, they've, they've got a lot of guns up. They need to just win it and shoot it. Carbono ties it up. Iserman can't get the shot away, and the Dallas Stars have defeated the Detroit Red Wings. A come-from-behind 3-2 win in front of a raucous crowd at Reunion Arena. Well, they always live up to their billing, don't they? Oh. They always do. Never disappoints. The Red Wings are continuing the, the discussion with the officiating crew. They had problems with time and penalties and, and the little little tit at the end of the game there, a little tit tat around the net. But this one's going to go down as a win for the Stars, both on the board and I think beyond the scoreboard in this one here tonight. Big night for the for the home team. The Dallas Stars win it. They remain unbeaten at home, unbeaten forever in their third uniforms. And they send the Detroit Red Wings a mighty message. And we'll come back and have more for you when we continue on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. The Stars defeat the Detroit Red Wings in fine fashion tonight. 3-2 the final from Reunion Arena. Welcome back to Dallas Stars Hockey along with Daryl Ray. I'm Ralph Strangis. How important was this win? What does it mean? Well, I mean, it was important, I think, for the Stars to get uh, their team game back. I don't think it really mattered that much who the opponent was. It mattered to them tonight, and it mattered to the people around here. But a game like that can really springboard them back to some consistency in their game because they really weren't playing all that well. The power play was doing all their scoring and relying on this, relying on that, squandering some points, giving up third period leads. And, and this might have just galvanized them here early in the season. As far as the, you know, the rivalry between, between Detroit and Dallas, who knows? It might not even come down to Dallas against Detroit in the playoffs. You don't know how this thing's going to work, but if they get another shot at them again, then deal with it then. But for now, you just have to stay in the moment and just enjoy this one if you're the Dallas Stars. Galvanize is a good word. Thank you. That's what Craig Ludwig did earlier in the game as we now revisit the Nation's Bank check of the game. Craig Ludwig on Kirk Maltby, and what a galvanizing hit it was. Yes, it was. Measured him. Just intelligent defense. Had the stick on him. Worked him down the board. Said, you're running out of real estate and stapled them to the boards down in the corner. There were a lot of thundering hits in this one tonight. The Dodge Game Breaker, the play most directly affecting the outcome, could have been several, but a big save by Ed Belfour on a Red Wing power play. Yeah, the Stars were in a, a world of hurt penalty-wise. Lidstrom with the patience fed Shanahan on the near side and the one-timer and threw some traffic and a quick shot. Belfour got across and stacked the pads and made our save of the game and obviously a game breaker. The three stars of the hockey game tonight, and it was the top line for the Dallas Stars sweeping the category. Mike Madonna with a pair of assists. He was the game's number three star. He was great tonight at both ends of the ice. That line was the best line in the game, obviously. Here, a Lettinen had the shorthanded goal that tied the game at two. He was the game's number two star. Just pencil him in on any given evening. Yeah, I'd put him in there every night. Just make a different category for Yuri Lettinen. And Brett Hall had two goals in the hockey game, including the game winner. He was the game's number one star. He is standing by downstairs to visit with us. And we welcome Brett to the show. And Brett, talk a little bit about this hockey game tonight. How important was it for your team to not only play well, but to beat the Detroit Red Wings? Well, it's not so much the Detroit Red Wings. They're a great team, Stanley Cup champions. But uh, it's a game uh, right after a game where we were in control against Anaheim and blew a two-goal lead with a minute left uh, after playing a great first period the other night. And, uh, and then we start out a little slow tonight, get down 2 nothing, And uh, I think it was more of a, a game for us to, to show we have the grit and the determination uh, that this team is famous for. And uh, I think we showed that. Brett, talk a little bit about, about your game. You're a goal scorer, and when the goals aren't going in, you get frustrated, and you, you've been frustrated the last little while. 
did you change something in your game or was there something that changed in the game or did you just finally get some pucks past the goalie again? Well, I think that's it. You know, I had a lot of shots tonight and uh, thankfully a couple went in. But, uh, you know, it's a different situation for me in a different uh, team, a different position and a different system. And it's uh, it takes a while to get used to that uh, along with playing with two guys that you've never played with before. Who, who have a, a, a style of their own uh, because they played within the system for so long. And uh, I'm used to coming late and getting into that seam that's open, and, and that's really not the way we do things. It's it's they, they take the puck, and it, you got to crash the net to get your chances, and, and that's what I kind of started trying to do tonight and got a lot more chances. Yeah, we got talking about that a little bit during uh, the game tonight, the fact that most of the guys who've signed here the last couple of seasons have had an adjustment period. Eddie Belfer had an adjustment period last year. Chambers did as well. Verbeek did when he signed here. And you've gone through that, that same thing here. Tonight must be uh, very positive for you, though. Well, it's a great feeling, you know. Uh, go out and play a game like we did, uh, especially after getting down two goals. Uh, like I said, you know, the best team in hockey was across from us, and uh, we wanted to come out and show them that we could play. And they knew. Uh, I think both teams have a lot of respect for each other, and uh, uh, it's a very good feeling because, you know, I think, uh, you know, no one's going to say it, but uh, deep down I think, you know, the Red Hull was signed for, for this reason, and it's a good feeling. It is. It's a good feeling from up here, too. Congratulations on a big win. Thank you very much, guys. That's Brett Hall of the Dallas Stars. He had a pair, including the game winner. His club defeated the Red Wings 3-2. We'll come back with more in a moment on the Dallas Stars Hockey Network. Score goals. Yeah, well, he's told that's us that before, the fact that there's no money in defense. <laughs> Although they demand that you play a little bit of that here in Dallas. I'm glad he said what he said at the end, which was, uh, and, and he knows it. I don't think it's a secret. They signed Brett Hall to do what he did tonight and uh, not I, I don't think primarily against that team but uh, it, it always fe feel, feels good I think when he does score against that team like that in a game that means this much to this team I know it's early and everything but uh, he said it not us that uh, he was signed to do what he did tonight to Detroit and he did it he got a pair and let's look at the final numbers razor and they too tell a story of this game in part. Well, the, the power play for Dallas goes 0 for 8, but remember they were up against the number two penalty killing unit in the league in Detroit. Only nine shots on those eight power plays, so pretty much one for power play. And they do outshoot the Red Wings 33-24. Osgood was very good, as was Belfour. And uh, the penalty killing, really a story, I think, in this hockey game. A shorthanded goal for, for the Stars on their penalty kill. And then a, a lot of power plays just, just went by the wayside because of good penalty killing. The Dallas Stars are undefeated in this building. They will try and get their first road win of the season on Tuesday night at San Jose. The Stars in two previous road contests, a win and a tie. The face a loss and a tie, I'm sorry. The face-off 9.30 on Wednesday night from San Jose. For my partner, Daryl Ray, Buck Spivey downstairs, and in the incredible crew at Reunion Arena, I'm Ralph Strand, just bidding you a fond farewell from downtown Dallas. In more of a 60-minute game. Uh, other than that, I think uh, we're starting to fire pretty well. We're starting to get the chemistry between the lines. Disappointing weekend for the Stars turned into a pair of games where the Stanley Cup contenders feel they prove something to themselves. The ability to bounce back, which we all know the postseason is all about. Huboff at center ice, picking his way to the Detroit line, into the middle of the ice for Madonna. Blind feed to Hall! He scores! That goal in last night's 3-2 win over the two-time defending Stanley Cup champs much more than just two points for a W. It's definitely going to be a confidence uh, builder for us and, and uh, keeping us on the right track. Uh, you know, we haven't played our, our best this year, and even though our record's good, but, uh, you know, we're looking to play like we did tonight every, every game. This was a game where you didn't say much as a coach. I mean, there was maybe 30 seconds in between periods. You just, you know, you knew the game was on the ice. You knew the players were playing hard, and you just tried to keep the energy up. Lots of the energy behind the comeback victory, supplied by the Yari Letnin, Mike Madano, Brett Hull line. Hull's two goals speak loud and clear on his transition to the Stars' game plan. And as a line, we've played very hard in all the games. It just hasn't been hasn't been going in for us, and I think it's uh, a lot has to do with the transition that I'm trying to make, uh, not only to the to the team system, but to to Mike and uh, Letts and. Uh, kind of figured out a little bit the, uh, 
you know, I'm so used to coming in late and getting into that scene. And that's not the way we work it. We work everything down low into the net. So uh, instead of staying out high in that seam, drive to the net, and that's where the puck's going to be. In. At 6-1-2, and two, Dallas now takes a solid start away from Reunion Arena. It was a pretty decent month, October. I think it was, uh, you know, travel-wise, we had two road games. Uh, it is one of the easier months I've ever played in the NHL, so it's going to catch up to this December, January, but you, know, you like to take care of business at home. We haven't lost all October, so that was good, and and uh, you know, especially when the, when the schedule cuts up to you, you like to have some points in the bank and just kind of, you know, kind of ride that out if you have some ups and downs December, January, which we, which we may have. Just a word. I have trouble with it. him for a long Detroit. Here's Steve Atkinson. Langenbrunner cutting to the goal. A shot and Osgood on his knees makes the save. And Jamie Langenbrunner got whacked on his way behind the net. It's very early in the season, but we got a preview of playoff hockey last night. You would have thought the Stars and Wings were playing a game sometime in June instead of October. You treasure games like that, and I think there's times like a couple of our players said at the end of the at the game you wish you would play eight or ten games against a team like Detroit because they just challenge you in every way. Madonna steps around better up the left and he scores. The Stars may very well get their wish before the season is over. Dallas takes round one but not without a fight in a series that has quickly become one of the best and most physical rivalries in the NHL. You know there's some certain players we wanted to expose and, and get on them and cause some turnovers and, and when you do you know there's a lot of hooking and clutching and grabbing and those are the penalties the refs gonna call nowadays it's taken a few games but the 17 million dollar edition of Brett Hall appears to be paying off but does Hall combined with the physical play send a message to Detroit this early in the season no I don't think so it's uh, eighth game of the year it's uh, they're still with the Stan uh, Stanley Cup champions and uh, we're gonna have to uh, do a lot more than one game to send a message if this game doesn't send a message, it's certainly a confidence builder for Dallas, rebounding from a two-goal deficit to beat the two-time defending Stanley Cup champions. You know, we're right behind the eight ball right at the start of the game, so we had to regroup and pull together, and I thought, uh, you know, we started out, shoot them, and out chance them, and, and our uh, perseverance paid off. That win over the Red Wings also keeps the Stars undefeated at home this season, making this place one of the toughest places to play for visiting teams began last night the stars hosted the defending stanley cup champion detroit red wings and oh what's the difference dallas rallied after falling behind two to nothing ho scored two goals including the game winner in the dallas stars three to two victory would you say that you guys sent detroit a message tonight no i don't think so it's uh, eighth game of the year it's uh they're still with the Stan uh, stanley cup champions and uh, we're gonna have to uh do a lot more than one game to send a message I just think the message is anytime you play those guys, you, you measure yourself against the, the best in the league, and they're, they're still the team to beat. I mean, a lot of people have picked us to, to go all the way this year, but until someone uh, dethrones these guys, uh, they're, they're going to be the team to beat. Someone else will get it, and I can just hang here in the slot. You know, and it, it's not, uh, that's not the way we play. He's a very, very talented uh, individual player, uh, but he's also a very, very talented 34, 35-year-old player. And if he really wants to enjoy the sport and he wants to accomplish and succeed in the later years of his career, between now and 40, then he's going to have to do some of the things that he has been doing. He's going to have to do more of them. I've been asked a hundred times if, if uh, uh, I like the style. I said, I like the style while we're winning. But I said, like I said, if we were an eighth place team, I don't think I'd really be happy with it. Imagine asking Michael Jordan not to slam. <laughs> Mark McGuire, not to swing to the fences. Brett Hull, not to always be looking for the heavy one-timer. In essence, that was the request. He's been very accountable defensively throughout these playoffs, and he's gone out and, and had to sacrifice some offensive production to shut down great lines. It's nice to shove it up everyone's butts who said I couldn't do it or wouldn't do it. That's what I like about it, and, uh, you know, I've got my numbers, you know, uh, I've put up great numbers in my career, but uh, everyone's always going to say I never won the Cup, but uh, hopefully now, uh, with four more wins, I can, I can shut everybody up. In the first round of this postseason, Brett Hull went without a goal. 
That was the first time in his career he's done that in a best of seven series. Since then, he scored 11 of his 12 points in the latter two rounds. I'm joined now by my colleague Barry Melrose, and that's really the way it's gone for Hall here in Dallas, progressing through the season and now in the postseason. Well, Brett Hall wants to win the Stanley Cup. He would rather do it scoring 80 goals, but by signing with Dallas this summer, he knew he'd have to change his style. He knew he'd have to be better defensively. He came to a team for the specific reason of coming to an organization that can win the Cup. He's done that. He's changed his style. They've been a rocky time here and there with Ken Hitchcock, but it's showing me that winning the Cup is more important to Brett Hall than scoring goals. He wants to have his name in the Cup, not known as the best goal scorer, never won the Cup. Brett Hall is one of the rare players to make his NHL debut in the Stanley Cup Finals. He did it in 86 with Calgary. On his first shift, on his first shot, he hit the post behind Patrick Waugh. 13 years later, he is back, and we send it back to the studio. Yeah, but that puck did not go in, Steve. Hall's ranking on the list of immortal goal scorers who have never hoisted the cup. Back then in 86, he was 21 years of age, a rookie with Calgary. It was the first time he stepped on the ice in the NHL. It was in the league finals during the 86 finals against Canadiens. Did not get a point in two appearances. 586 goals, 12th all-time and fourth behind Marcel Dion, Mike Gartner, and Dino Cicerelli in cup futilities.